this time we're going to go ahead and start the commission meeting for June 19th. City Clerk, will you please start the roll? Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Present. Commissioner Burbank. Present. Commissioner Colwell. Yes. Commissioner Dodie Lee. Here. Commissioner McCool. Yep. Vice Mayor Bradford is absent and Mayor Vila. Here. This time we're going to do the invocation and the pledge. And uh, if I can ask uh, Pastor Shrine, please, to come and do the invocation, and then uh, we'll all stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance as well. Good evening. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come to you today and we just invoke your Holy Spirit to come into this meeting. Lord, we pray for peace. We, Lord, we pray for your wisdom. We pray for your power. We pray for your understanding between one another, for we are all your people. Lord, we lift this commission up to you, the mayor, the staff members, and all the citizens of this great city, that we will rise up to the occasion that you have put before us, that we will look out for one another, look out for the city, look out for our children, look out for our neighbor and our neighbor's neighbor. So as we come today, we come thanking you for what you have already done, and we look forward to a bright, bright future. In the name of Jesus, I pray and we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You be seated. This time we're going to go ahead and do the approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting of May 22nd, 2023 as presented. Can I get a motion and a second, please? So moved. So moved by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Second. Second by Commissioner McCool. Please vote. Motion passes six to zero. This time we're gonna go ahead and move to presentations, awards and reports. Uh, I'd like to invite the commission down to the floor so we can do the proclamation of Juneteenth, 2023. And if I can invite Pastor Caroline Shine to also please meet us down there. Whereas on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, setting in motion the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas it was not until June 19, 1865, that it was announced to those still enslaved in Texas, the people are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. And whereas celebration of the end of slavery, which became known as Juneteenth, is the oldest known public celebration of end of the end of slavery in the United States, and whereas Juneteenth commemorates African-American freedom and celebrates the success gained through education and greater opportunity, and whereas on the largest scale, celebration of Juneteenth reminds each of us of the precision promises, precious promises of freedom, equality, and opportunity, which are the core of the American dream. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and city commission of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim Monday, June 19, 2023, as Juneteenth in the state of Florida and urge all citizens to become aware of the significance of this celebration in American history and the heritage of our nation and state. <laughs> To Mayor Avello and to this great commission, 
on behalf of Greater Faith AME Church in Deltona, Florida, on behalf of the National Council of Negro Women, on behalf of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, on behalf of the citizens that make up the city of Deltona, we want you to know that we appreciate this with much gratitude. This time I'd like to invite Mary Leeson up as we uh, go into the annual audit presentation, annual comprehensive financial report for the year ending sub ended September 30th, 2022. Um, good evening, Mary Leeson, Finance Department. The city undergoes a financial audit each year and issues an annual comprehensive financial report that includes the city's financial statements. The independent audit firm of Purvis Gray Certified Public Accountants will present the city's audited annual comprehensive financial report for the year ended September 30th, 2022. It's my pleasure to introduce to you this evening, Lori Walker. She's a certified public accountant from Purvis Gray. She has traveled from Ocala this evening to present you the results of the audit. Good evening. Um, again, my name's Lori Walker, and I'm with- Can Curtis you lower the mic, please? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, and I'm naturally quiet to begin with, so that doesn't help either. Um, once again, my name's Lori Walker. I'm from Purvis Gray and & Company, and we are your auditors. Um, we are here on site right now, starting some of our interim field work for the 2023 audit, but wanted to take the opportunity to present the um, September 30th, 2022 audit for to you. Um, since I see some new faces here this year, I just wanted to share a little bit about our firm with you so you know who your auditors are and the experience and qualifications behind our audit. Um, we are an audit firm. We've been providing audit services for 77 years, which includes governments most of that time. We started with electric utility agencies in the 1940s and continue to specialize in government entities with 50 dedicated auditors within the state of Florida. Um, we audit about 25 municipalities, six Florida counties, 10 school boards, and many other special districts, including utility authorities and not-for-profit entities. We have seven offices in Florida, and our firm is a member of the BDO Alliance. Alliance members are an independent network of accounting and audit firms, giving us access to an even broader extent of resources, which typically would be expected from only the big four international firms. So we do have a lot of um, unique opportunities behind us. Today Thank you. we can we, can, I don't mean to interrupt you. Okay. Can we get somebody to please uh, from PIO to uh, make her mic a little bit louder? Sorry. Is that any better? Yes, okay. please. Um, so, as Mary said, we're here to present the results of the September 30th, 2022 audit report, which I believe you've all been provided a copy of this. Um, while you have had some time to review it and the financial reports, we still want to mention a few highlights from the results of the audit and invite you to ask questions as they come about or even at the end of the presentation. Before getting into those details, I do want to mention that the audit was completed timely this year and submitted on time. There were no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies to report to you. Um, most importantly, the city has maintained a good financial position and all of the funds. Um, your financial reporting is called your annual comprehensive financial report, and this meets your external financial statement requirements for Florida statutes as far and the rules of the Auditor General, as well as requirements under secondary bond markets, direct lenders, the Florida DEP loans, federal and state grant granting agencies, and along with the GFOA, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting Program. This program encourages and assists local and state governments to go beyond the minimum 
reporting requirements of generally accepted accounting principles to prepare not just the annual financial reports, but an annual comprehensive financial report, which evidences the spirit of transparency and full disclosure, and then recognizes individual governments that succeed in achieving the goal. The, the city was awarded this certificate for the 2021 annual financial reports, and for many years has received this recognition. We anticipate that the city will, re will receive this uh, recognition again for the 2022 report. Um, just if you kind of flip into your page one of your report, you will see our independent auditor's report tab um, under the financial reporting. There's also a summary of our results on page 153. Um, management is responsible for the financial statements and internal control, where our role is to issue a report on the fair presentation of the financial statements, which is an unmodified opinion. And the city has received an unmodified opinion, which is the highest in opinion that you can get on your financial financial reports. The general fund, which is the city's main operating fund balance, has had an increase in fund balance this year. Um, in fact, if you look in the statistical section, you'll see that uh, for most of the last 10 years, the city has had an increase in the general fund balance. Um, we've discussed the importance of this fund balance in the past, as you need to have some funds set aside to continue your cash flows, as well as planning for cap capital projects or even situations like pandemics or hurricanes. So there are funds available to the city if you do get in situations where you're in need emergency funding. Um, we recommend the city continue its efforts to build the fund balance while encouraging the city to continue this trend. Um, the water sewer fund has also seen an increase in the net position and has a positive working capital, which is important as an indicator of the ability of the utility to meet not only its current obligations, cash flow demands of operations, and fund the future projects. This fund has also received funds this year under the Federal American Rescue Plan Act that have a specific future use and requirements that are fed that under the federal law and are currently earmarked for special projects, which are beginning to um, start this year in 2023. And those funds do have an expiration of 2024, I believe it is. So that project is well underway. Um, as part of our audit, we also review internal controls and compliance over financial reporting and grants, compliance with major federal award programs, investment compliance with major federal award programs, as well as Florida statutes for investment compliance. Um, we have also um, Florida statutes to review for financial emergencies or deteriorating conditions. Our reports are included, and once again, they do not report any material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, or non-compliance with issues related to financial reporting. While we do discuss recommendations with management during the audit process, none rose to the level of being findings or matters that would be deemed to require commission's direct aid or assistance. If there were such matters, matters we would make you aware of those. Again, we'd like to thank you and thank the city staff, particularly the finance staff who work with us the most throughout the audit. We appreciate management's cooperation throughout the audit. And with that, I will conclude my presentation and invite any questions or any comments related to the audit for the physical year ending 9-30-22. Thank you, and before I start calling the first commissioner, um, I'd like to take this time to see if I can get consensus from the whole dais. We have a very, very long agenda today, and we're, I'm trying to get consensus on each person up here speaking at least no more than four minutes until we get to the quasi-judicial stuff, at least twice. Caldwell? Agree. Agree. Okay, we have consensus. Uh, commissioner McCool? Yeah, thank you. My only request is um, thank you. Um, I know how long you've been working on this. <laughs> we bumped into each other in the conference room. So Way back in you. February. Yeah, thank you very much for getting this out. I also want to make sure that the public has access to this online and in paper format for those that might need it. Let us know where they may find that, keeping it downstairs or whatever. Mary, if you can speak to that. There is a PDF copy online. It's under www.deltonfl.gov. You go to departments, click on finance, and you will see the annual audited financial report. And the PDF version is there. Um, 
I, we can make paper copies available. We generally don't because it's, as you can see, the book is rather yeah, expensive. Yeah, like 182 to pages or something like that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but we would never deny anyone a paper copy. If they want it, we can print them one. So please know that, the public, that we have that. And also, if we could, I'm, I'm making a request from either PIO or, well, to the city manager for PIO, if we could make that front facing as we move through um, budget season here, that with the, along with any budgetary information that we're doing, updates on that. I know that each of the commissioners has had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, finance and so I just want that information to be to the public there is a lot of concern about budget and finance in general um, as there should be uh, again we are you know we have stakeholders to answer to so if we can make that front-facing forward someplace easily accessible on the website under financial whatever um, I'm not sure how it's tabbed but uh, mr. Chisholm if we could make that happen we we need need that information to be proactive as we move through budget season. That's right. that's my only comment. Thank you for that. I've actually read all 182 pages of it um, as soon as it was released. I blacked out on at least 45 pages of it, but <laughs> thank you for answering my calls about it. Okay. Mary, thank, thank you guys for, for being available to answer questions about this. Um, so thank you. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. This time I will look forward to a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the city's annual comprehensive financial report for the period ending September 30, 2022. The city manager has the authority to make corrections of Scrivener's errors and the like. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Dana McCool and a second by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Please vote. Motion passes six to zero. All right, at this time we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move to public hearing resolution number 2023-14, establishing the preliminary annual rate resolution stormwater services for fiscal year 2023-2024. Mary. Um, this resolution before you is to establish the preliminary annual rate resolution. There will be an annual rate resolution, the second vote in August. Um, this is for the stormwater assessment fee. And um, I would like to introduce you tonight, Brian Manns. He's with um, GovRates, who has completed an in-depth in evaluation of our stormwater capital needs, as well as recommending a stormwater assessment for 2020. Thank you, Mary. For the record, my name, as, as she mentioned, my name is Brian Mance from GovRates, and I'm here to talk about the, uh, the stormwater assessment. So Deltona's stormwater utility has several areas of responsibility construction of new or replacement stormwater handling infrastructure, cleaning of the underground stormwater drainage system, maintenance of uh, the roadside surface drainage network, removal of obstructive vegetation from ditches or swales, mowing and litter control on Deltona's collector roads and 31 residential sectors, master planning to solve local flooding and water quality problems and to provide uh, pollution prevention solutions, and emergency stormwater management services before, during, and after major storm events. Right now, the stormwater system has a lot of aging infrastructure, and uh, as with a lot of utility infrastructure, it's often out of sight or out of mind until there is an incident. Deltona is primarily a swale or ditch form of stormwater conveyance, unlike 
uh, new developments which provide curbing, catch basins, retention ponds, and other contemporary design standards. Hurricanes Ian and Nicole caused about 250 homes to be flooded, uh, caused roadway closures, and an overwhelming, unprecedented impact on the stormwater infrastructure. Deltona has stormwater infrastructure that in some areas is over 50 years old, and the assets have reached or exceeded their useful service lives. And here we have uh, some, some pictures of the, of the flooding impacts of, of, of Hurricanes Ian and Nicole, and I'm sure that most people have seen other ones uh, too. So your stormwater assessment is an annual charge per, per equivalent residential unit to fund stormwater operations. And the existing of, uh, assessment of $128 per ERU has remained unchanged since 2019. It's not been right-sized since COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic and other factors have caused a substantial in inflation and in utility costs. It's insufficient to fund the identified capital projects to begin the process of upgrading the aging stormwater infrastructure to improve stormwater flow and reduce flooding. Currently, it's accounted for in a special revenue fund, and there's about $535,000 per year uh, in, in subsidization from the general fund, and that's proposed to be eliminated. With respect to identifying the expenditure needs to be uh, funded through the, the the stormwater assessment, we identify revenue requirements, which includes your operating expenditures, your capital improvement program, uh, debt service, uh, and administrative transfers. All these elements together add up your annual revenue requirements. With respect to major cost factors affecting the stormwater system, there's been over $50 million of stormwater system replacements and upgrades to address the aging infrastructure and improve, and improve stormwater flow. Uh, this, as, uh, you're, as most people are probably aware, the city's had has recognized increases in contractor bids due to inflation, supply chain delays, and a shortage of, quali of a qualified labor force. City staff continually pursues grants, appropriations, and other cost-free options in an effort to reduce the amounts that must be funded through stormwater assessments. Uh, you know, here I have a, a list of projects that are that are total about twenty million dollars. I won't go into the into the details, but certainly staff can can uh, uh, talk about some of these these projects. That but that uh, accounts for about twenty million dollars of the fifty million dollars. And then there you have some additional projects that were identified after hurricanes, uh, Ian and Nicole, to improve flood control that are about twenty six million dollars. And in the uh, in the report that for this. Uh, assessment. I actually have a little bit more detail on these projects. Uh, then we have other stormwater projects, equipment, and vehicles of about 99.4 million. The total in the current multi-year capital improvement program is about 54.9 million. With respect to funding of this capital um, improvement program, uh, we've we've assumed that, that almost 80% uh, is uh, going to be funded through bank loans or, or, or special assessment notes. Um, and uh, with the rest uh, funded on a pay-as-you-go basis. We have worked with uh, PFM, the, the city's financial advisor, and based on their recommendations, we're assuming three bank loans, one in 2024, one in 2027, and one in 2029. Uh, certainly operating expenses are, are uh, projected to continue increasing due to the uh, ongoing inflationary effects, there's been substantial increases in utility supply costs, and there have been nationwide issues with filling positions and keeping employees. There's also a need, uh, obviously, to perform more repairs and maintenance on, on the system. And, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about inflation, you know, a key takeaway is that permanent increases in costs must ultimately be passed through to customers through, through rates or else um, or, or else uh, the, the system becomes more and more deficient and, and gets harder to, uh, to, to, to catch up. Uh, there also, there's also a need uh, to, to meet the rate covenants associated with the anticipated debt financing. And for the bank loans, the payment of debt is actually senior to the payment of operating expenses. 
and, and as part of the plan recommended by PFM, again, the, the city's financial advisor, there's an existing bank loan from 2009 that is assumed to be refinanced uh, at, a, at a lower interest rate. And these bank loans are assumed to have 20-year repayment terms. So this chart kind of has, is, is, I think, is a good illustration of where the stormwater system is right now. These, uh, the, the, the red line here represents uh, your, your revenues under um, existing assessments, whereas these bars represent um, the expenditure requirements of the, of the, of the stormwater system, where uh, blue is, is um, operating expenses, the, the green uh, represents the, 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 the debt that, we're, that is uh, being proposed to be issued to fund these capital needs, and then um, this, this, uh, this uh, um, purplish uh, bar here represents um, pay-as-you-go capital. With respect to financial risks of not adjusting rates, uh, I mean, there's basically you'd have an inability to secure debt financing for these major or critical capital needs. When evaluating um, the abilities to to, uh, to repay debt, lenders will only consider assessment adjustments that have already been adopted. Um, uh, there's an inability to fund all revenue requirements and meet financial targets, and assist assessments will be even higher uh, in, in the future because the capital needs for the utility will not go away, but will be more expensive to address in the future. And this, this uh, graphic here shows that if I were just keep the existing assess assessment and not uh, assume any kind of increase, obviously we would not be able to, to pay for this financial plan. We'd quickly run out of cash. With respect to the projected need for uh, assessment adjustments, for 2024, it's, it's uh, an ass annual assessment is $160, um, or $13, another perspective is $13.33 uh, per month. And certainly when developing um, recommendations, we want to consider affordability of, uh, of the utility rates and, uh, you know, based on the, um, you know, uh, bond rating agency guidelines, less than 1% of median household income for stormwater rates is considered affordable. And as you can see from this, from this chart, our, our 10-year financial plan um, is, is uh, you know, the, the city is anticipated to, to have, uh, to continue to have very affordable stormwater rates, but as you can see, we're, we're showing a, a, a plan to gradually increase over time from uh, $160 to, to uh, $250, um, uh, but of course, assessments are adopted annually, and only the fiscal year 2024 adjustment needs to be adopted at this time, uh, and, and the need for future adjustments would be reevaluated, as we talked about. The, the SAF is always, uh, is continually looking for grant funding and other, quote, cost-free sources. And, and so uh, maybe there, in the future, there would be an opportunity to, 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 to lower some of these, these adjustments. Uh, but as you can see, looking at the same graphic, and again, this is the, the revenues under the existing rates. Um, this time I've represented it with a dotted red line and with the proposed uh, adjustments, you can see that we are meeting our expenditure needs and are able to fund this $50 million of critical and major capital needs. Now, um, with respect to uh, a monthly rate comparison, some stormwater utilities bill monthlies while others like Deltona have an annual assessment. And so um, with respect to um, the, the, uh, the, the effective monthly rate, here you can see that you know, if you consider the, the annual assessment and divide it by 12, it's less than, it comes out to less than $3 uh, per month. And like I said, it, it meets all the affordability standards from a utility perspective. I also wanted to just represent uh, some, some, so, you know, what, what some utilities in the state of Florida are currently charging. And you can see um, within 10 years, Deltona's stormwater rate will be uh, lower than what quite a few uh, utilities are, are paying right now. But a stormwater rate or assessment comparison is not a report card on how well a utility is performing, because there are a lot of reasons why they differ among utilities. 
uh, such as services provided uh, through the stormwater fees. Some of the the uh, the, the the lower um, the the fees on the on the lower end of the chart uh, may not be providing street sweeping, uh, sweeping uh, the amount of lake uh, and canal area to, to be maintained, the availability of grant funding, the amount of capital needs uh, for, the, for the system. I mean, there are tremendous, uh, there, there's just a, uh, or amount of, amount of subsidization from the general fund. Um, there are just a lot of different reasons why um, rates differ among utilities. And so, you know, each utility is, is different and has its own specific needs. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not a report card. So our recommendations are to propose, propose the, uh, fisc uh, adopt the proposed fiscal year 2024 annual assessment of $160 for equivalent residential unit. It is considered affordable and competitive. It's necessary to provide the uh, sufficient revenue secure financing for a portion of the capital program. It does not exceed the utilities costs. It eliminates uh, subsidization uh, from, from the general fund, uh, like I said, of $535,000 per year and the, also the 4% early payment discount is applicable with this assessment. And then to evaluate the need for additional assessment adjustments each year. And that's, uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Commissioner McCool. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to, um, if you could, like the elevator, 15 second elevator speech, talk about, because I didn't see it anywhere, how this affects our bond rating also, our position with our bond rating when, when that is written out also. In the, in the respect that this is one of the things that's looked at, our utilization, right, of, of what we're assessing and what we're paying, right? We have a good bond rating right now. Mary, can you speak to that? Yeah. And Jeremy might be able to, to okay. chime in too. It's just one of the things that affects our financing overall, right? And we have a good bond rating right now. And so with this meeting, what we're talking about here, us meeting this need for, for our municipality, that it keeps our bond rating good for our other financing, correct? Yes, and good evening. Jeremy Needfelt with PFM, financial advisor to the city. Uh, you're absolutely right. The, the bond rating you know, is a measure of risk to, to bondholders and to investors such as banks. Mm -hmm. uh, this plan really isolates the, uh, the general fund from exposure to stormwater needs uh, and, and properly allocates those costs with a very high credit revenue source. So going to a bank with a, with a guaranteed revenue, you know, at 98% collection rate is, is a high quality credit. Uh, it's standard for this type of an assessment for this type of project uh, as it relates to, you know, uh, stormwater needs and protecting property values uh, in that system. The way it's set up with the city is very common across the board, uh, but it does also provide some protection against the general fund to come out of pocket for what otherwise would be uh, an essential service paid for from the stormwater fund. And my last thing there is I'm trying to assure the public that this rate increase, it's a rate increase, and it may or may not meet to their um, their COLA, you know what I mean, uh, depending on what your what your income source is, right? So I don't know that it will meet the COLA at 2%. I think that it's, most COLA is 3% at this juncture. But what I want to assure our public with looking at this is that this structure is like revenue neutral. We're not looking, and what I mean by that when I say revenue neutral is that we're not looking to capitalize on this. We're looking to keep that neutral stance to provide the service, to balance providing the service as what the outlay is, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I, I think the, the model that Brian created is very dynamic and it shows, yeah. you know, phased approach so that there is an affordability component to, to doing the projects as they can be done without increasing the assessment. You know, the, the inflation rates, as mentioned over the last mm -hmm. four years, is very significant. So uh, that was certainly something that was taken under consideration as we modeled out when you would be able to do the projects, you know, when you would need the financing in place to you know, go ahead and let those projects go for mm -hmm. contract. Uh, and, and I think there is an ability over time, as Brian mentioned, to make adjustments to that model and use grant yeah. funding to offset potential increases. Okay, that's all I have for you. And, and for our um, city manager, uh, the Teresa Basin, was that, that 1.2 and we were trying to get half of that covered? What was that, Mr. Chisholm? Because we asked for 600,000 for the Teresa Basin study, but we show it $1.2 million on 
the um, request we had to the legislature was for six hundred thousand dollars, so we'd match it with the six hundred thousand for um, one point two million for the first year. And um, as you may know or may not know, uh, we didn't get the six hundred thousand from the state, but we do have the funds available and we intend to move forward with the project. Yeah, and I want to assure the public that because what the, a lot of the talk is about storm season coming up and it's about flooding and it's about those what we're doing to mitigate. And also, um, I know that I think that Mr. Chisholm will be talking about um, our, our grant writer, our new, because the things that I've talked to her about are amazing. So just keeping that moving forward. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Commissioner Jody Lee. Well, I, was, I agree about the stormwater rates have to be fixed, but I just want everybody to pay attention to one thing. It shows the stormwater rates, what's proposed in that, going up for 128 to over the next six years to $250. There's a lot of people in the city with fixed income. So I just hope everybody pays attention to that, that we don't hurt the people that mm -hmm. have limited income, because that's a big jump from 128 to 250 in six years. That's it. Mr. Chisholm, is, was, has there been a plan to fix this in the past? You can start my clock as well, please. Has there been a plan to fix the to drainage increase, system? Maybe increase so that we can make sure that we have enough funds to take care of our stormwater situation? In the past, I don't know. I, I, I know uh, what we have has is Has there a been plan. a plan maybe? Pardon me? A plan, has there been a plan? They had a plan um, a number of years ago, but I don't think it ever got to the level of evaluating the uh, the impacts on the basin itself. It was a very basic plan. Okay. Uh, this plan will not only um, uh, look to solve problems, it will look to identify areas where there may be conflicts or, or uh, create problems, and we don't want to create problems with this effort. And uh, and we have, uh, we have found additional funds that we're going to be bringing forward, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Uh, that'll come in that will help us with the project. Uh, we worked pretty diligently with the staff uh, to identify another, other resources and we'll continue to do that. How, when was the last time we raised the rates for this specifically? 19, uh, 2019. So we've had a plan in the past that has not been implemented and we've That's chosen right. to not That's raise correct. the rates. So now when we are sitting in front of this commission, now we have to raise the rates a lot higher because yeah. it hasn't been done in the past, right? That's true. It, you, right. it was subsidized before. I understand. And that so, falsely, you know, gives you a false sense of security there. Of course. Doing that. Let me ask you this question, right? Because I want my residents to have a peace of mind. It's only two questions. One, we're only, if we approve this, it's only getting approved for this year, as you stated. We have to come back next year and reassess everything. Correct? It would, yes, we have to do that every year. Correct, okay, number two. If this had been done before, and I know none of us here have a little magic wand in front of us and we don't know. If this had been implemented before, would, would our residents have suffered as bad as they suffered with this hurricane? I, I would imagine, I don't know, I can't imagine not making improvements to the system if you had the funding. Okay. Can we uh, go ahead and uh, listen to public comment, please? Thank you, Mr. Chisholm. Hey, Mayor, there are two public comments on this item. Adam Vasquez, then Kathy Bryan. Adam Vasquez, please. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Adam Vasquez, president of Twin Lakes HOA. Um, I come up every time the stormwater ends up on the agenda. I'm here tonight on behalf of um, my, uh, my community. Um, Twin Lakes sits um, downstream below Lake Leeson, um, so south of the rest of Deltona and north of unincorporated enterprise. So the result of water trying to make it to Lake Monroe is we take the water into our community, especially more now that you guys have constructed, well you guys didn't, but you've proved it, but Lake Leeson Reserve was built. We've looked at it on Google Earth. There's more water more that's directed into our community now, and as a result, that water processes through our community, through our infrastructure. And and the county, I guess, needs to, or us or the county, someone needs to acquire the land and put a retention pond there to catch the water that's now going to a resident's backyard. So I take issue with, I mean, I prefer the stormwater tax, but with the tax, I kind of want the city to come and fix the stormwater in the community. 
Um, tell, you know, we pay for our drain cleaning. Um, we pay to re we have to pay to reestablish swales. So what I'm hearing here tonight um, is that we're going to have to. You guys are going to get a loan like we are to fix things like the Teresa Basin and drainage throughout Deltona. That my that me and my residents are going to have to pay, right? But then you guys say, oh, you know, we had some very productive meetings with Public Works, so I don't want to get anyone down. Um, they are going to come into our community and they're going to uh, give us their assessment on what they think we need to do, but they're not going to pay for any engineering or any reestablishment of swales or any fixing of drain boxes, everything that I just watched in this presentation that's that would be covered if we weren't in a private community. Now, I know we have a gate. There's other HOAs in Deltona um, that are also classified as a private community. So I, I love the idea of the tax, but the residents that are paying the tax need to get the services that they're paying for, right? And they're, and they're paying for things like drain cleaning. They're paying for things like repairing swales. So just because I live in a gated community and still contribute to this tax doesn't mean, um, does, does not mean that we shouldn't benefit from that. Um, you know, and, and there was an argument made that you guys take the water, but even last year after the hurricane, there was a hard time. I saw a state of emergency. I mean, we did get the pump, right? But it was no easy effort at all. Um, we left our residents flooded. Um, f uh, three residents particularly that had the outflow drain from the lake flooded for weeks, and it was right before another hurricane came that we finally did something about that. Um, and again, th so, so we're grateful for that, but it was not like, hey, the city was there to help. So so, you know, we'll pay the tax, um, but we want something from it. And if, you're, if we're not going to get what we need out of it, then we're going to fight the tax. We're going to not just fight that tax. I mean, if you consider where we're located, um, really, we need to reevaluate, like, why are we even part of Deltona in the first place, right? Um, like, again, we take on the water, we take on the problem, we pay the taxes, and then they say, oh, well, we'll tell you what you need to do to fix the problem. We don't have the money to fix the problem, so we're going to go get a loan as well and pass a special assessment that our residents are going to pay over the next X number of years. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Kathy. Brian, please. Good evening. Kathy Bryan, Deltona. Um, guys are in a tough position. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I keep asking about the budget because I, I realize we, we, we need this. We need this fixed. It's a shame that previous commissions, even before 2019, didn't keep up with our infrastructure and our stormwater infrastructure better. So what, is there any trade-off? What can we trade off? Because I'll be real honest with you, yes, people are on fixed incomes out there. But those fixed incomes, <laughs> if, I don't know if any of you have gotten your yearly insurance bill yet, but it's sticker shock. So people are not only going to get hit by this, and they're not going to get, they're only going to get hit by the, the waste management and everything else. Um, and then you guys haven't, like Mr. Sosa mentioned the trim rates, you guys even haven't started to talk about that. Or if you have, we haven't heard. But what I'm asking you is, let's look at the budget. Is there anything that we can do a trade off of? And the, and the sad thing was, was during these two hurricanes, what we did to try to alleviate the water in one place only sent it to another place and, and did harm to, to people there. So we really need, I think we need a lot of improvements in the stormwater, but let's see if we can find a balance, please, between that and some things maybe we don't need. I don't know how we're going to afford to be a city anymore. I really don't. Between this and everything else that uh, is going to cost this city, <laughs> I don't know if the people are going to be able to afford to live here, so I'm just saying consider very, very carefully, please, what, can, what fat can we cut out? Thank you. Thank you. The people's choice. I think the people would like to find a little bit more about these lawsuits with the water. There's a lot of lawsuits filed. Are we going to be kept in the dark about that, too? Mr. Richard Bellick, this has to pertain to this specific item on the agenda. Is there a lawsuit? Lawsuits are Is there not a lawsuit in the agenda. filed here? Richard, the lawsuits are not part question. of the agenda. What are you banging? This is not part of the item agenda, Mr. Richard Bell. Okay. All right. If you have a grievance regarding this, please state your grievance. So you'll let me know when I can ask about those lawsuits then. As you can do that during public Thank comment. you. Thank you. David Sosa, please.
Okay, we're looking at increase in rates. All right, first of all, Ian, Nicole, 100 year storm, supposedly. I wanna know, have we looked in, did the city fail to proactively get ready for those storms? If we haven't even touched that, that's a problem. Uh, what I would like to know is, did we look at lake levels? Have we studied lake levels? Did we lower lake levels knowing there were storms coming? If we haven't addressed that, why are we spending all this money, $20 million, on stormwater improvements? Now, if we go back when Jane Shang was city manager, she used to take about $500,000 from stormwater to mow grass which was part of the, you know, maintaining the swells along the, you know, main roads. I want to know, has that money been switched over to the general fund to where it allows that half million dollars to be used for stormwater projects? Now, normally we get a list of stormwater projects by classification. We can do this this year, this year, this year, this next year, and, you know, a 10 year plan. Now, if we had had that 500,000 for five years, we'd have probably knocked off half those projects. So some of the projects that I saw listed up there were supposed to be covered already within some of the COVID money we received. And I was under the understanding some of those projects were taking, taking place. I wanna know if we've actually done a study into overdevelopment, especially by the Three Island North, where we had a 16 acre parcel that if you look at the maps, Looked like it was 10 feet under the road, but it was filled in right before these storms, and yet that caused all the flooding around Three Island North, Little Lake, and then it went straight down to Teresa Basin. Have we addressed that? If we haven't addressed that yet, why are you looking to increase our taxes? Because that's what this is. It's a tax increase. I want to know, did we proactively look at what happened last year, and did we come up with a solution from that instead of saying we just need to spend another $20 million to cover the infrastructure for stormwater? Thank you. Here, this ends public comment. Thank you, at this time I look for a motion. I move to adopt, Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt resolution number 2023-14. The city manager has the authority to correct Scrivener's errors and the like. We have a motion by Commissioner McCool. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stephen Codwell. Please vote. Motion passes five to one. This time we're gonna move to public hearing resolution number 2023-15, establishing the preliminary annual rate of assessment for solid waste services for fiscal year 2023-2024, Mary. Uh, this resolution is to establish the preliminary annual rate of assessment for solid waste. Uh, the solid waste collection system is based on the opera um, operational needs and it's funded, funded by uh, fees levied to property owners in the city. Um, we have a, a consultant that the city has used, Mr. Red, Bill Redman, who has done an in-depth evaluation of the stormwater fees and the n numerous factors that affect this rate. And um, he is here to respond to any questions that you have. Um, his documents are included in your agenda item. He has provided extra copies for you. If you would like them, I'll be happy to pass them out. Um, but um, please welcome Bill to, uh, to answer your questions. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Bill Redman, Vice President of Redmond Consulting Group, and we do the consulting and oversee of your solid waste uh, contract. Um, as Mary said, uh, the, there are several ca calculations that go into this to rate assessment. The, if you have your handouts, you'll see the calculations. There's uh, the collection rate, uh, the landfill cost, 
the Volusia County Property Appraisers uh, annual fee, the um, Administrative General Fund charges, estimated monthly costs, then the annual new cost, uh, which uh, we also have a reserve in there of 4.3%. We recommend uh, more than twice that, but um, we wanted to, in discussion with staff and so forth, keep the price down as low as possible. The county has, has notified all the cities as of October 1, their uh, disposal costs will be going up uh, approximately 11%. Mm -hmm. There's two, cal there two calculations that go into determining the disposal cost. And this, we take, we keep the records for all of the uh, tonnages monthly that the city pays the disposal cost for, and it's broken out by uh, residential solid waste and by uh, uh, res residential yard waste and bulk items. Uh, the residential waste, uh, solid waste, is going from thirty-four dollars a ton to thirty-seven dollars a ton as of October one, and the yard waste and the bulk collection rate uh, disposal cost is going from 23 to 30. Um, then we have the annual fuel adjustment and we have the, the coal, the CPI adjustment. The CPI adjustment, the, the landfill cost is determined by the last 12 months of disposal, disposal costs and tonnages. Those tonnages divided by the homes a number of homes and multiplied out by the current by the current rate to get the current disposal costs. Then multiplied out by the new rate to get the, the rate that will be, will be in effect as of October one. The um, fuel adjustment cost is uh, taken off of the government website, and that's the uh, average of the last twelve months uh, versus the current month. And uh, that increase is 34.7% uh, on the fuel. The fuel is a, is a minor calculation, is $1.47 of the rate and 32 cents of the rate respectively between the residential and the uh, uh, garbage and the solid waste and the uh, uh, bulk items. The uh, disposal, as you can see on your handout, uh, is uh, runs about 57 pounds, 57.2 oh two pounds per house per weekly. Uh, the disposal cost currently is about four dollars and one cents, and with the increase from the county, that's going to go to 4.45. The uh, recommended rate is 23 to 233 dollars and 15 cents uh, annually. If you have any questions, any further questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you if I can. Commissioner McCool. Thank you very much. Mr. Redman, one of the questions that I get asked the most, and I, and I would like for you to address the misnomer about recyclable billing. There are, whether it be an old stock of paper, I don't know, this is why I'm asking you this, whether it's an old restock of paper or whatever, but people are under the assumption that Deltona, when we quit uh, collecting recycling, that we will continue to collect money for recycling, which that's not true. And I would like for you to, um, to tell us regarding what happened at the same time the recycling was discontinued um, as far as the rate structure goes. I think that you remember that, that it went up, and I would like to answer to my constituency that question first. Yes, ma'am. When, when the determination was made by the current management at the time, uh, uh, the city attorney and I worked very diligently on this contract. Uh, the, the rates that we were quoted for the collection of residential garbage and bulk items and yard waste would have increased by $25,000 a month to the city. Since that time, Commissioner, <coughs> these, um, the collection companies have implemented a processing cost for recycling, so at which is over two and a, almost two and a half times what disposal cost is. So that twenty-five thousand dollars would probably be significantly higher today uh, in the cost to the city. The, so the processing fees that are being uh, that are being charged in other municipalities now is seventy-seven dollars and fifty cents a ton 
where you compare that to $34 a ton for putting it in the landfill. There are, previously, many years ago, we would get uh, rebates from the, from the haulers. And the city at one time, I believe, had a, a, a program for this money to go towards scholarships and so forth. That money went to zero over a period of many years. Mm -hmm. There is um, no re rebates being given to the municipalities. Now, we represent a lot of municipalities. There are no, rep no rebates being given to the municipalities now, and they are paying an additional 7750 which is going to be increased this year by the CPI. Okay, are there recycling options out there that are presented to you that can be presented to the city for those that want to recycle? Is there a solid, legitimate recycling option for the city? Not without a cost. So, let me ask you, then let me ask you this. Is there a way to reduce our cost? And I'm, this is a rhetorical question, really. We quit producing so much stuff. We quit throwing away so much stuff. We have to cut back our content, what we throw away. It is the only way through because I have looked at this, right, and we need to throw away less stuff. Sorry, that's the answer. Um, last thing, sorry, Mr. Mayor, but last thing, because I've been asked about this also, clean out costs, okay? We have, I see houses cleaned out all the time with the stuff left by the road. And what I believe is happening, this is only my opinion and residents have asked me this, we have the bulk item and the yard waste item lumped in together right at $30 per ton, right? So is there, have we ever entertained or does, do you, right, recommend, does anyone have a separate line item for clean out cost for the bulk items because I, we're paying for people getting basically kicked out or abandoning their property. The, all of the residents are the ones that are good stewards that bundle their stuff and that have yard waste, right? Or right. I feel like they're getting lumped in. Is there anything that, or do you see a marked, um, a marked cost difference in the clean out cost for yard rather than the yard waste? There, there, there are ways to, to uh, address that issue. Uh, one of the municipalities that we represent that, that we basically say if it's lar a pile larger than a, than a uh, Volkswagen Beetle, it's a, p a picture pay pile. And the city, uh, that city represents, uh, actually makes income from that. But when, let me go back in, uh, on the bulk items. When we calculated the landfill, uh, the, pr the proposed landfill costs, we separate out the household garbage, mm -hmm. regular garbage, solid waste, and the land and the, um, the bulk items separately. So we have all those tonnages and have all those average tonnages, which is applicable to each each resident. So, but th there's also uh, a contract with the code enforcement mm -hmm. uh, on a move out where those uh, are, are, are separated out from the, what the city pays for and what the city pays for landfill, that's charged by, to the uh, homeowner, to the uh, property owner by through code enforcement. I would like for you to go back to your client, sir, I'm asking this as our representative, go back to your client. I would like to see within the next 30 days something presented to the city, to our residents and constituency as to how to lower our footprint as far as that yard waste or consumerism or whatever else tips that they have because I can't, we can't be the first municipality that's asked for this, right? But we can go and ask from our businesses. I see business dumpsters overflowing all the time because we're, we're throwing away everything at one time. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Bring that back to our city manager so that we could probably be a little bit better at doing that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Jolie. Uh, one more uh, comment. In looking at the, the weekly weight, weights per residential unit, uh, you're 49 pounds in solid waste and 7.9 pounds in bulk and yard waste, which is pretty much average. But I'll be more than happy to sit down with a waste hauler and uh, approach that question for you. Thank you. Commissioner Jolie. Now, this is a proposal for our rates to go up. What about businesses? Are they all going up at the same time? I'm sorry, sir? All the businesses in town, are they all going up, the rates going up at the same time, or is it just going to be the, all the residential? All those, those contracts are individual with each individual business. 
So uh, now you had, but you handled all that for the city at the same time. I'm sorry, sir. Did you handle to get it, that whole contract between the waste pro with the businesses getting trash picked up and our residential again? From what I understand, it now that all the businesses have to use one company now for that's correct. Trash. Why that's is correct. it that we have no? There's no there's no market for. I mean, there's businesses have to take whatever we sign this contract for when they can call other companies and get trash cheaper than. At the time we did the residential contract, and correct me, uh, city attorney, if I'm wrong. At the time we bid the, the we bid out the uh, residential contract, we bid out the commercial contract, and that was freely bid by multiple haulers. Yeah. So that was awarded on that basis of the lowest prices. Right, I'm, but I'm just wondering why was the businesses in this city not given a choice on what waste company they can use? Now they have to use one company. We made that decision, or the, the past commission made this decision. Why can't businesses do it how they want? Well, two, two points on that. We were, we were, had no control, the city had no control over the waste companies that were providing services to the city or to the, to the resident, uh, commercial customers. The code enforcement was continually getting complaints from, uh, from commercial customers about their service and nothing they could do. Also, there was eight or 10 different waste companies in here running on your streets and we had no control. We could not control what they were doing. They were leaving garbage behind. And uh, I mean, we just, uh, we've, we've constantly have issues. It's at one of the uh, uh, no. shopping centers where in, in the waste company gets fined for that if they don't collect it. We have control. The city has control now over what happens out there. Well, now with that being said, if we demand that all businesses have to use this company for trash. That, that's the way that, that, that it was structured within the RFP and the bid pro, uh, process that we went through six and a half years ago. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I just don't think it's fair for businesses because you can get cheaper rates by going to a different trash company. And it seems like we want to make the residents pay, the, pay more money. I think businesses should have to pay a few dollars more for trash and not all the residents. I mean, every time we turn around, we want to squeeze another person for another penny. I, I mean, when do we ever stop? Commissioner Just Barton. my point, sorry. I mean, the, um, go ahead. Yeah, when Thank this contract me. expires, the commission will again have the pleasure of dealing with bidding their garbage, both residential and commercial. This goes back to administrations previously. They were doing an increase. It was going to be a significant increase. And when they were looking at the, the haulers at the time, it was going to be something that the city manager at that point, the commissioners felt would be, you know, too high of an increase. And so one of the options that came up was uh, linking and, or even considering going to, you know, a control over the commercial waste also. And also, and they were willing to give us a break, I think, at that point on the bid. Well, I'm just and so that's what happened, but it is only as good as till these contracts expire, and I don't remember when do they expire, Jim. Well, uh, as a business owner mm -hmm. in town, it wasn't too long ago, I just got told maybe a year and a half ago that I need to put these new dumpsters, and I paid a heck of a lot more trash mm -hmm. than I was the year before. So if this has been going on for contract for six or seven years, I just got hit with it like a year and a half yeah. ago. So, But I don't think it's fair that businesses have to take whatever somebody in City Hall says you have to use. That's just... And again, I guess the only, my only point is this is an issue that only the commissioners can handle in the future with regards to those future contracts. You, do, you don't have to stay with that model for the future if you don't wish to. What, so can I get an answer to when this contract is up? Approximately 18 months. In 18 months, so 2024. Can't we just kill it and start okay. over? Can, um, so question for city attorney. Yes. Uh, and of course, that'll be at the pleasure of the commission, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what happens if we don't approve the increase? You mean this impre yes. increase? Correct. I don't know, Jim. Can you handle that one? Yeah, I can I handle it. Know. You'd okay. have to take out a general fund in your budget. It's going to affect our general fund? Yes. 
You would take out you would take out whatever that number is. What's the gross number a year? A year. Two thirty three fifteen, sir. Two hundred thirty three thousand. Two thirty three. Two thirty three. That's the. Sir. What is the gross charge a year for uh, us to pay the landfill? Uh, for just to pay the landfill? Yes. Uh, it's going to be. Four forty-five a month by thirty-six thousand homes. Okay, that's what it's going to cost you. You don't want to do that. Okay, I mean, that's, so this is this is y'all are going way down the wrong road. I if you it. want us to take the contract we have and retool the contract, we can do that. But go. don't think that there's a way that you can run back and there's somewhere else you can charge the, no. you know, for this garbage. So, so Mr. Chisholm, the reason I'm asking is I just, I just was part of the vote to increase literally their stormwater. Yeah. And I did it against the, I did it because I know it's the right thing to do and because I know that our residents are suffering. Whether people want to admit it or not, we're, we're probably in somewhat of a recession. Not everybody's working. We have a lot of people on fixed income. And I understand it's an additional $7, but to some of our seniors, that's, that's probably a medicine that they can buy or probably food that they can buy. So if I can save them the $7 somewhere else, I'm going to try. If we're going to get stuck paying them an extra year, I, I, don't, I don't care. You know, we'll pay them the extra year. But moving forward, we really need to do something about you know, making sure that we, we bring down these, these costs for our residents. So um, I'll entertain, oh, Commissioner Jody Lee, one more time. Commissioner Jody Lee, did you want to say something else? Mm, no. All right, I'll entertain a motion at this time. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do, but I can't find it again. I move to adopt resolution 2023-15, the city manager has authority to correct Scrivener's errors and the likes. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Dana McCool and a second by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Can we please vote? No, oh, I apologize. We have a public comment. Okay, Mayor, there are two public comments on this item. Brandy White, then Kathy Bryant. Brandy White, please. All right, before you guys take this vote, I'd like these answers. Um, there's some confusion with this recycling. Yes, we were still charged for recycling after it ended. I came up to this podium. I can pull the clip. I asked about where our money was going for recycling, and we were told it was now in some reserve fund. My exact question to that commission at the time was, when have we ever had a reserve fund for trash, and why do we need it now? To which I received no explanation. So now if something has changed since then, it would probably great for the residents to find out. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the contract was done in 2018, and it was five years, so wouldn't that make it 2023 that it's expiring? Can somebody double check on those dates? Um, also, why isn't the contract listed here? Why, why is this up before the contract, uh, the contract was set, price is set? I, I'm confused why there's a resolution on here changing what the contract was set at. Nobody? Okay. Um, so um, my third question would be this recycling fee that we did start paying and we're paying into a fund. Where did that money go? Where is the reserved fund now? Is there a line item for it on the budget? I'll pull the clip. It exists. And if something has happened to that fund or we're no longer paying into that fund, we have the right to know where our money is. Where did it go? What's being done with it? I didn't understand why we suddenly had a reserve fund to begin with when we didn't have one for 20 years. Um, I get the increases and then how it says, well, since we didn't actually increase it over the last six years, which again, I think we need to check those numbers. That, that's not accurate. We, we have increased in the last six years. Um, then it would be a 2.4 annual increase. That sounds, like it would pan out, but if you're actually looking at that, when you look at what they're taking in, when they base their following year's criteria, they take that into consideration. So that's already built in, the fact that there's not gonna be increases for the next X amount of years of a contract. It's spelled out black and white right here for you. So I think there's a lot of confusion, and if you're not 100% sure on what this is gonna vote on, because again, I'm really confused about a, a price increase under a resolution when we have a contract that's still in play. Um, I think you guys need to ask a little bit more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Brian, please. Ow. 
Wow, that shocked me. Um, I'm glad that, um, Brandy, I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the questions I was going to ask several years ago when we did the contract with WastePro and we discussed the recycling. Um, rather than refunding that money to the residents, they were going to hang on to it for increasing fuel costs and things like that. So that was going to be my question. Has that money ever been used for that? And again, I'm going to tell you the same thing. We keep talking about fixed incomes. Those fixed incomes have gone from here down to here with the increase of everything else. And this is one more thing added on, and I get that, I get that things are increasing. Um, I would appreciate it though, if you guys vote to, to approve this increase. If Waste Pro would stop leaving my garbage can in the driveway where my vehicles egress and ingress because I leave it out by the driveway in the grass and when they are done with it, it is no longer where I left it, it is in the driveway where my cars go in and out. So that's the other thing. When it comes to recycling, let's face it, most things aren't getting recycled. Plastics aren't getting recycled. Not that I'm aware of anywhere. There's not anywhere close to here. Things like aluminum cans, though, can be. I was surprised. I didn't think Volusia County was recycling at all when I found out at, a, at an event at the library that actually you can take stuff up to the transfer station up on uh, 44 and drop things off. So, I, you know, if they're going to increase, is there any way we could come up with some kind of compromise? I, I realized that before we had a recycling truck and a garbage truck running, you know, can they be combined and then just do, even if we did aluminum cans only, something, anything. It's something to consider. And again, once again, I ask each and every one of you, including the city manager, when, as we're going through that budget, I say we because I'm paying for it. What can we cut out? so that people can afford the increases that I know you're gonna vote for. That's it. Thank you, Richard, please. Is this the only garbage company? There's no other company? You can't get a bid for no other company? You know what I think the problem is here? I think it's over a lot of people's heads. That's what I think is going on. I think there's unqualified people. I remember 2018 when they made this contract. You were there. There's no other company? You can't get another bid. How long has the Deltona been with just this one company? So in other words, he comes up here and tells you, we need an increase. Okay, give him an increase. Don't look at no other company. How many people are employed in, by the city of Deltona? Get him, get him, 300,000 over there to go search for somebody, get some bids. Mr. Chis <laughs> Mr. Richard Bellick, please, personal tax. Am I right or wrong? You can't get another company? You don't even try? We get speeches all the time, long-winded speeches. Ba, 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 is this, that. That don't mean nothing. Just fanfare for the people. That's all we get. Speeches, speeches, but nothing, nothing behind it. A hollow shell. That's what we have for government. A hollow shell that comes up here, and I don't care if you like it, you don't like me, I don't care about any of you to tell you the truth. You just come up here, you just grab 200 a week, and you just do nothing. Thank you, Mayor. This ends public comment. Before we uh, go for a vote, is there, Mr. Chisholm, can we get an, a solid answer about the about this fee that, because I've heard it multiple times and I haven't got that address as well, regarding the, the recycling money that was set aside? I don't know of any uh, recycling uh, fund reserves that, are, that exist. Okay. I'm not aware of any. Can we, could this commission, is it okay if this commission um, the people up here, if we table this until we get an answer to that, because I think we need an answer to that before we move forward. Because if there's reserves, then I want to know what happened to that money. Mr. Mayor, according to Granicus also, which I would like for us to refer back to, the 
2019, 1-7-2019 agenda date for the solid waste review is here on Granicus, so which would make the new contract date early 2000 or 2024. So if we could just get clarity on that also, perhaps we talked about it. It's here on Granicus on 1-7. So if we could talk about that, I'm, I'm for tabling also until there can be, be some okay, clarity provided. But I've, I've, yeah. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, let me just make your, um, if the contract is coming up, we can make changes in the contract at that point. Um, but you still have garbage that has to be picked up every day in the city. And this pays for your garbage to get picked up. And uh, the contract, if we come up with a new contract, we may be able to reduce the, the, uh, the fees. But at this point, uh, this is our best estimate of what it costs to pick up garbage in the city and deliver it to the county. And it covers the cost associated with disposal of that garbage. Um, as far as any other funds that might be available, um, I'm not aware of any particular fund identified that is a reserve for anything uh, like garbage. Okay. So he, here's the direction that I'm, I'm willing to give the city manager so we can get our staff get to, so this gets done and this stops being brought up. I want us to identify where that money went. Obviously, we have residents that paid for it. Once we identify where that money went, then I think the right to, thing to do, if we're gonna go ahead and vote for this, then refund each and every one of those residents that paid into that. Because why are we keeping their money? If, if it is true that there is a fund, right? If it's not, then we clear it up and then the residents have peace of mind, okay? So at this time, Commissioner uh, McCool, your motion stands. Correct, or are you withdrawing your motion? In looking at the contract here, I mean, there are several things that have been brought up, and the also uh, the legislar the legislar is lurky. There are two contradicting um, there are two contradicting pieces of information here, according to legislar, uh, because one discusses uh, late de December about bringing it up in January. There's also reference to October 2018. So. Um, <laughs> you know. You made the motion. You have the, the, the. All right. I will amend my motion to. Um, I move to table the discussion of the rates until such time as the commission has provided clarity on uh, options for the city until the um, option is made available as far as where the recycling fee went and until such time as we have clarity on when the contract should begin and end again. Go ahead, Did you Mr. get Mr. that, Bridget? <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I will. go ahead, Mr. Chisholm. Could you? Could we just take a break and let me find out about this recycling fund? I'm not familiar with it. I mean, I've been through the budget. I have not seen anything like that. But let me talk to the staff and see what we have. All right, let's take but, a five-minute recess. Let me just make one final point. This is setting up the ability to meet the time frames for your budget adoption. You start delaying it, you're going to be into a. You will be back here, uh, you know, and dealing with it again. Is all I'm, all I'm saying. Could you, okay. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so since this is my motion, Mr. City Manager, could you clarify when budget? process will begin for the public. As I know, we've had meetings, individual meetings with budget because they need to understand how this is going to go. And and, and so far, no budget has, a workshop has been put up. We have met individually, but there again, the public wants input on the budget they have in the past. And so could you just give us time frame so that we understand succinctly what we're talking about here? I, Five minutes and you'll let us know? <laughs> sure. Okay. All right, five minute recess. <laughs> Commissioners, if you can please make your way up, I would really appreciate it.
right, Commissioner McCool. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in that brief uh, recess, I want to let you know, there was never a special fund established. There was talk about a special fund being established by the, at the time, city manager. This was never followed through on. So we had, there were two price, two costs presented at that time, which was a uh, cost with recycling and a cost without recycling. Okay, so to clear that up, there was never a special fund, there's not a special fund, there never was a special fund. It was talked about, the mayor at the time, Mayor Heidi Hertzberg talked about it, it was talked about at the time with, uh, I think, the Mr. Cooper uh, at the time that to establish, to put that money somewhere because it was being collected, but that never happened. With, with that being said, we have to submit this uh, increase to the property appraiser's office by the the 1st of August, if I'm not mistaken. Can somebody give me a thumbs up on that? Mr. Redmond, City Manager, yes, by the 1st of August. And so um, what I will do is I'm going to go back because we may, before August, lower this rate, but we may not raise this rate. We have to report it to the property appraisers by August 1st. So what I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask tonight, I'm making the motion uh, to leave the mo a motion the way that it is. And then I ask that the city manager get together with staff on three points where we talk about the establishment of a special recycling fund that was never done. Number two, that we have clear definition because there are three alliterations of when the contract took place or when we talked about that. And then to clear up any other questions submitted by residents. And I would like that done by the next regular city uh, what by the re next commission meeting, the regular commission meeting. So with all of that being said, I am going to restate my motion, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, so we have the restated motion by Commissioner McCool and the second by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. This time, could we please pull up a vote? Could you clarify what the motion you're speaking of, Mr. Mayor? So we're making, you made a motion, do you reestablish your motion to approve? I'm, yes, I'm going to move, I move to adopt resolution 2023-15 with the understanding that by next regular commission meeting, which insert date here, the city manager will clear up the rate status and we will at that time, could I have, I can't hear, that we would be able to lower the rate but not raise it. So my motion is to adopt resolution 2023-15. The city manager has the authority to correct Scrivener's errors and the like. Elizabeth, is that good? Okay. Before I accept your uh, changes, can um, we um, read the motion again, please? Since I second it, thank you. Is there any other questions by the commission? No? No, but I think the audience uh, would like to hear it again. Elizabeth, they, can they you please I'm sorry, Liz. Appreciate it. The motion. I move to adopt resolution number 2023-15. The city manager has the authority to correct scripture errors and the like. With the caveat that with the understanding by next commission meeting that the, the city manager will clean up the rate status. What's going on with the rate status? Clear up, I'm sorry, clear up. My own handwriting, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I thought the confusion was about the deposit, not the rate status. Um, Commissioner Vasquez, the confusion was regarding the contract date, uh, if there was indeed a special fund established, and what really necessitated the rate increase based on like those things. Was the commission, were, were the residents do a rebate or something like that? There's just a lot of muddy language there. So I say that I ask that we go with the increase until 
at least time certain the next city commission meeting when the city manager would come back with language because this has to be submitted to property appraiser's office. Okay. Commissioner Villavasco, so you stand by your second? Okay, just go ahead and vote please. Motion passes six to zero. This time we move forward to public hearing resolution number 2023-16, establishing the preliminary annual rate resolution, street lighting services for fiscal year 2023-2024. Mary. It's off. This resolution is to establish the preliminary annual rate resolution for the street lighting services. This is not for all residents. This is only for residents who are members of the street lighting district. There are certain districts that have asked the city to have diff um, upgraded lighting, and this is um, the cost, in increased cost that is assessed to the residents which the city pays. Is there any questions by the commission? Yes. Commissioner McCool. I would just like it succinctly said, there you go, that um, this is a preliminary rate resolution, right, that has to be provided by October 1st, 2023. Let me just add a, a little clarification. Yeah. This is the preliminary rate. The f annual rate will be voted on by the commission in August. And I'm sorry, I don't remember if it's the first or second meeting. I think it's the first. So these are the guidelines in which the commission moves forward with the rate, yes or no, right? I mean, yeah. Is there any other questions by any other commissioner? No. Oh, Do we have public comment, please? No, Mayor. All right. Make, Commissioner Jody Lee. I'll make a motion, uh, move to adopt resolution 2023-15. City Manager has authority to correct certain errors and all like to public hearing resolution 2023-15, establishing a preliminary annual rate of assessment. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Damn, my computer's messing up. Move to resolution number 2023-17. The city manager has the authority no. to correct signatures. Commissioner Jody Lee, it's 16. Is it 16? I don't know. Must Can I have a different computer? Which one? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that one. Go ahead and read the motion, please. It ain't even coming up. That wasn't it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I move to a resolution number 2023-16, city manager has authority to correct scrivener's errors and all like. I have a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee. Second. Second by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Seeing no public comment, can we please vote? Motion passes six to zero. This time we move forward to public hearing resolution number 2023-17, establishing the annual rate resolution nuisance abatement services for fiscal year 2023-2024. Mary. Okay, this resolution is to um, establish um, a special assessment to just this property at 179 Citation um, Avenue. This nuisance abatement assessment was established in 2018 for the collection of unpaid costs and expenses incurred by the city for nuisance and lot cleanup. On June 6, 2022, the commission by unanimous vote recommended the city to include $1,527.30 as a non ad valorem tax levy for 179 citation for a period of 10 years. The effort is an, this effort to clean up, this, is this for the city to recoup the costs associated with the abatement of this property for cleanup that is a nuisance and a threat to public health, safety, and welfare. 
Any questions from the commissioners? Mm -mm. Do we have any public comment? No, Mayor. Right. This time I'll entertain a motion. I move to adopt resolution 2023-17. The acting city manager has the authority to correct Scrivener's errors and the like. Second. The motion by Commissioner McCool and a second by Commissioner Jody Lee. Can we please vote? Motion passes six to zero. Move forward to decision E, which is public hearing resolution number 2023-18, establishing the preliminary annual rate resolution, Lake McGrady Aquatic Weed Control Services for fiscal year 2023-2024. Mary. This resolution um, establishes the preliminary annual rate for the L Lake McGarity Special Assessment District. This was a uh, weed control district to treat the lake for the residents who are, live on the lake. And um, this, the uh, Finance Department and Public Works have um, come together to try to establish a rate that projects what the costs are for cleanup. Um, the cleanup depends on how much um, algae bloom they have. So this is what we consider an average cost of cleanup. So we can pass this uh, cost on to the residents of Lake McGarity. It's $60 per year per parcel. Commissioner McCool. I, I just want to know, have we met with the, did the residents come in and meet like with Lake McGarity? Do we, ha I don't know, cause I, I know that no. we have this. I think what, I'm sorry, I can't remember about four or five years ago mm -hmm. that we did a treatment of the lake to get the weed control right. down. And since then, it's just been a matter of evaluating how much additional treatment it needs. So it varies depending on. But if I remember, nature. we don't have any pushback from this. It's something that, that that those residents wanted and encouraged, if right. I remember correctly. And last yeah. year, we, you know, the, the fund balance was growing a little bit, so we cut it back, and now we're, we're trying to level it off yep. that we can still have enough funds if a treatment is necessary. So right now, it's sort of a minimal, and the lake has been sustaining um, an acceptable level. Thank you, Mary. Commissioner Burbank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mrs. Leeson, have we did, uh, uh, evaluated any of the strategies for wheat nuisance control on the lakes, mechanical perhaps, and the cost differential between what we're doing now and a, and a mechanical, less ecologically harmful method? Uh, um, Commissioner Burbank, I don't have any expertise in treating aquatic weed control. Okay. I'd have to defer to the um, Public Works Department. Um, at this point, we just determine how much the cost will be to treat it and anticipate costs in the future. Well, would you be so kind as to summon the Public Works Department for me, please? Sure. <laughs> I love that part of this job. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Phyllis Wallace, Public Works. The Good evening, Ms. Wallace. Did you understand the question? I did, yes, sir. Uh, the residents have never approached the city, to the best of my knowledge, through their representatives. There are five representatives for the entire lake. They would communicate through their representatives, get with the city. Certainly, we can approach them to see if they are interested in some other alternatives to spraying. We have done sterile carp addition, so we are looking at different ways in which to mitigate the weeds in the lake. So the resident, the last sentence is the residents came forward and asked for this. Yes, sir. And but it's not a service that we have to provide if we don't need to. Is that correct? It's a service that they came to the commission and petitioned okay. with 51% or more of the residents to establish it. It remains in perpetuity until that body, if you will, comes back to the commission to have it rescinded. So thank you. You answered my question. Thank you. 
Anything else? Yeah, I was just wondering why we're not doing it mechanically as compared to chemically, and I understand the, the price is just astronomically different. And certainly, but that's up to them. But that would be up to them, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there any public comment? No, Mayor. Okay. This time I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion, Mayor. I move to adopt resolution number 2023-18. The city manager has the authority to correct to correct scrivener's errors and the like. We have a motion by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Do I hear a second? Second by Commissioner Caldwell. Uh, Mayor, I have discussion, please. There was a second by Commissioner okay. Caldwell. Can we please vote? Mm -hmm. Motion passes five to one. All right. This time we're gonna move forward with public hearing, rehearing of ordinance number 04-2023, request to amend the Deltona Village business, pub, business plan unit development, overall development plan, master development plan increase in the number of multifamily unit allocation from the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units. Amendment to the development agreement approved by ordinance number 21-20 uh, dash 2009 and rezone an additional 26.57 acres of land to be included within the Daltona Village pub. So Joseph Reese and uh, city attorney, is this? Yes, do you want, you want Joe, you want to start it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor, City Commission, and respected members of the public. Joe Ruiz, Planning Development Services. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, ordinance uh, number 04-2023. And before I go ahead and get started with the presentation, um, I will ask the city attorney if she can swear in. Sure. Um, Thank you. Swear. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. If there are folks in the audience that are vested, if you've received a notification, if you would please stand, and any consultants and Joe would stand and raise your right hand, please. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. Now, Joe will ask all of you to disclose ex parte communications. Thank you, Marsha. Mayor, if you can uh, please pull the uh, commission for ex parte. Sure. Commissioner Stephen Codwell. Then be sure. I have none. Commissioner Jody Lee. Uh, I've met with Mr. DeMarsh and his attorneys on several occasions, been to the property. Uh, I think I've had a couple phone calls also with Mr. DeMarsh. Oh. Commissioner Dana McCool. I have met with the city planner, city attorney, city manager, but no ex parte communication with the applicant or the applicant's attorney. Commissioner Burbank? Not since our last meeting, no, sir. Commissioner Vila Vasquez? I have none. And I've had a couple emails with uh, the applicant's attorney, and I have met once with uh, the applicant myself, so. All right, good evening, Commission. Uh, as mentioned, Ordinance 04-2023. Um, before you is a request um, to amend the BPUD known as Deltona Village. Um, the request uh, as proposed, um, and this is a rehearing of the application that was originally proposed. Um, there have been no changes made to uh, the request from the applicant. Um, and that is to amend the Deltona Village BPUD overall development plan, master development plan, uh, known as the ODP slash MD to increase the multi-family unit cap to 652 units. Uh, secondly, to amend the written development agreement approved by the ordinance 21-2009, uh, and also to include additional lands totaling approximately 26.57 acres to the BPUD. Um, I can go into the uh, presentation as originally proposed, however, to spare um, some details. Um, we, and, and just to bring it up to speed here, on April 3rd, the city commission originally voted uh, to deny the application four to three um, for ordinance 04-2023. Um, and then on May 1st, the applicant had uh, requested a, a request uh, for a rehearing where they presented um, the request before the commission to do a rehearing, um, which has brought us here today. So the commission did grant that up, that request. Um, on May 
22nd. Um, it did come before the commission, um, and at that time there was a request from the applicant to continue the item, um, and so therefore that continuance has brought us uh, before you all today for your consideration. Um, if there's any questions on actual um, request of the BPUD, I can go into that. Um, if not, um, staff's recommendation originally was to approve the ordinance number 04-2023 um, in light of information um, staff did verify that the trips if recalculated um, to modern day trip generation would uh, be within that original trip cap um, however um, if, if there is a uh, request to up the trips um, based on modern day numbers um, then staff would um, recommend that proportion of fair share um, be reconsidered however I don't believe that is the request of the applicant at this time. So just for clarification before I call on Commissioner McCool and then Commissioner Villavasquez, you're saying the staff is not recommending it unless the, there's an agreement to? Yeah, the proportion of fair share wouldn't come into play unless there was a request to up the trips on behalf of the applicant. Perfect. Yes. Commissioner McCool, thank you. Ms. Ruiz. Thank you very much. Mr. Ruiz. And we talked about because when there was evidence presented at the commission meeting before, there was a question about trip count, right? Correct. It is my belief that um, the study was antiquated. Uh, could you remind us of when the traffic study that was submitted with the package was done. Yeah, so the original approval for the Altona Village came in uh, 2010, and so the traffic study that was originally proposed at that time was done in 2009. So let me clarify. A 2009 traffic study, or 2010 traffic study, was submitted for a 2023 project. Y yes or no? Correct, correct. The, we, we are still okay. holding on the yes. Does planning have any information regarding the growth in the city since that time as far as people, as far as traffic impact? Have we had an increase in residents, sir, since that time? We, we sure have, Commissioner. Sir, have we had an increase in traffic since that time? Yes, we have. With that being said, do you remember me specifically asking you for an updated traffic study or asking the applicant to provide an updated traffic study that we would reflect more modern numbers. Yes, I do recall at the original hearing that that was requested on your behalf. Okay. The result from that traffic impact study from the engineer that the city, did the, did the city or did the applicant have the engineer go out and redo this? Uh, so staff, um, in, in, in request of the commission concerns that came up of that meeting, um, staff did uh, hire a consultant to look at updating the trip generation numbers to modern day trip generation rates. So from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, sir, during that study it was discovered that there, were pro there was a, an increase, what is the percentage of increase in traffic impact? Um, there was a proportionate fair share number that was calculated um, by our consultant to look at if, if, if the project was modified at this time or, or changed um, or if someone knew where to come in. That um, was about a delta of about $8 million as far as prop fair share. Could you say that again, sir? $8 million. $8 million. Did you take this prop share of $8 million back to the developer and to the applicant's attorney? The original memo was provided to the applicant, yes. And what was the response from the applicant? Um, at this time, the applicant is not requesting to ch change or propose their application. Okay. With that being said, Mr. Ruiz, could you today, in your, I don't know, knowledge of what you do for your job, could you go, sir, and obtain labor and materials for building a project at 2010 cost? Likely not. No. At that same turn of the coin, would it not be true, sir, that if you applied that same rationale to building going on right here in Deltona, that a proportionate share is what a developer pays in order to offset mitigate costs caused by the construction that they're proposing? Yes, yeah, and part of that, part of the, um, the proportionate fair differentiation is the impacts that were anticipated back in 2009 and the roadway deficiencies that existed then were different than those that exist today. So I want to understand this too, and I would like the public to understand this, sir. That basically the applicant has come before us asking uh, to increase 
the residency and acreage, which would give them more permission to do more, to build more on that property, yes? More residential, multifamily residential units, correct. More multifamily. Are these um, workforce housing, sir? Uh, from my understanding, they'd be market rate. But that market would, rate. I, I let the applicant answer that. Okay. And let me ask you this, sir. Did I at any time or any other person ask you, inquire to you about also the impact that Senate Bill 102 would have now moving forward in our city? Um, I believe that conversation I've only had with yourself and, uh, and city administration. Right. So for clarity's sake, Senate Bill 102, which was just passed by the state of Florida, will allow a developer to come into our town, anywhere that we have industrial and commercial, plop down a development. With us, we have about 500 acres of commercial industrial space. With that being said, if you come in and you put down 20 units per acre, you're looking at a net of 10,000 extra apartments that could be built in Deltona, 40% of those being workforce housing. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Based on the bill, they'd have to be the 40%. And with that coming forward, sir, would there be, um, would they need to uh, provide a proportionate share of development here in Deltona or pay a proportionate share of those costs? So I haven't d delved into the totality of the bill, um, uh, but I, I think the uh, capacity um, items, um, including proportionate fair share, would still have to be taken care of. Mr. Ruiz, are you familiar with the, two, the original um, 2010 development agreement between the applicant at the time and the city of Deltona? Are you familiar with that? Did you read about that or study up on that and yeah. going forward here with the city? Yes, Commissioner. Okay. And back at that time, what was asked was, uh, this was a major amendment, and I, so I'm going to be succinct about that, a major amendment here uh, in this development agreement in and uh, with planning and development because the ask was, and according to the minutes in that 2018 meetings, the ask has been and always been for 414 units for this area. Is that correct, sir? Yes, the 414 uh, multifamily unit cap uh, originates back from the original approval of the 2010 development agreement. Mr. Ruiz, is it also true that back in the original development agreement that it was um, laid out that we wanted commercial or we wanted mixed use in that area, yes? Yeah, it was uh, a business plan unit development. Uh, the majority of the uses, um, a plethora of, of commercial uses, and then uh, originally it was a conditional use to be able to do the 414. Um, and units. thank you, Mr. Ruiz. And is it your understanding that back in the original 2010 development agreement that it was asked to, to migrate these parcels together for the benefit of like Burger King going in there because the property wouldn't divide up properly, right? Because of the, the way that the land was platted at the time. So the original ask was for a commercial business for or for a business, Burger King, correct? Yeah, in 18, uh, Burger King was, um, was coming in um, to this site and so the uh, site dimensional requirements were changed at that time. So at that time when we did the here, when we go back here, Mr. Ruiz, is it for us to understand that the entitlements issued in 2010, those were the vested entitlements. What is present today before the commission making a motion on this, that the area that is laid aside has not changed. They still have vested rights in that area, right? Because I'm going back to 2018. 2018, the ordinance is 414. Um, um, the ask is for 414 in all of the meetings, planning and zoning, sirs. Do, do you recollect this and doing your research for this year? Yes, that is correct. The number 414 okay. has always held true. Everything, every major amendment and every time that this has been amended, and there are minutes in here which I'm happy to provide anybody that wants. I'll get the co file copied for you. But in here we talked about developing this area for 414 units. Is that correct? So every time the commission came up and was asked about piecemealing this together, it was with 414 units, right, sir? Yes. Sir, have we infringed on any of the applicants' rights at this juncture? Have we messed with their vested rights? Um, if we deny this application for the additional units, will it affect their vested rights that they have and what they've already invested in? I will allow. We have order 
I think that's a legal question, Commissioner. Okay, whoever would like to answer. I believe it's clear that when you take the units and the 30 plus acres out of it, the rest of the package is clearly vested over a number of years. Mr. Ruiz, could you tell us why, or tell us that like after the advent of the DRI, why the development equivalency matrix was, it is the way that it is, sir. Yeah, so the equivalency matrix was um, was done back in that original 2009 study. Um, so what that allows for is for conversion um, and swapping of uses. Um, for example, if uh, 20,000 square feet uh, were to be used for, say, i.e., a movie theater, to use um, to use that as an example, um, then that conversion rate would be applied depending on the uses. Now, movie theater probably wasn't the specific use, but let's just say you. Typically Typically, it's divvied up in uh, commercial, uh, office, um, high turnover, restaurant per se, um, residential units as, such as multifamily and things of that nature. So it kind of groups them as you try to convert them, and then it also gives a rate of what that equivalency would be of so many square feet of commercial to whatever that converted use is. So just to clarify my last question to you for the moment, Mr. Ruiz is that we had a consultant come in so that we could determine if the city of Deltona and the county would be receiving their proportionate fair share based on realistic numbers. I'm sure that we would all like to go back in time to 2010 and pay for things today that were valued at the 2010 cost, but we cannot, we're a city. And I would like to understand that if, that, if this is allowed to move forward, okay, without this fair proportionate share that we're looking at, as Mr. Ruiz said, eight million plus dollars that the taxpayer will pick up, will have to pick up. The residents of Deltona will have to pick up. So a proportionate share is a proportionate share. I'm sorry, I, these are real numbers. These are local numbers and in our, um, in our planning, it's incumbent upon us, it says, for us in our ordinances, in our comp plan, that we must use best numbers to make these determinations. So while vesting only applies, you might be afforded a lot more room, but all of this planning that the city of Deltona did was for 414 units. Is that correct, Mr. Ruiz? O originally quantified, yes, the 414 units. So make that clear, that unless this applicant agrees that the numbers are real, that the traffic impact is real, and that the fair and proportionate share goes up by almost $8 million that the taxpayer is gonna be paying this, not the applicant. So I just, I want that, it, what did our consultant say, Mr. Ruiz? Our consultant uh, calculated based on the, what the trip generation rates for the 11th edition of the IT manual would calculate. So what they did is, um, obviously there were, um, there's been built out developments within Deltona Village, i.e. the movie theater, uh, the Burger King, the racetrack, and the 301 um, apartment units that are being built. So that all went into what is uh, currently reserved on the traffic network, and so based on the uh, 24, uh, approximately 24,000 trips, um, in comparison, when you look at it from a level generation standpoint of the uh, traffic manual, um, which is what engineers use modern day, um, the impacts to the roadway network um, then quantified based on today's deficiencies that um, approximately 10 million. So I want us to be clear in the fact that that we have two choices. Whether we believe a 2010 study applies to today's true matrices or whether we're going off of today's information to apply it to what our taxpayers are really going to be paying. That's what I want us to consider. And that's what I have for right now, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vila Vasquez and then Commissioner Burbank, please. Thank you, Mayor. Joe, was this project modified since the first time it came to this commission? No, what you see before you is the same proposal that came before you um, originally in April. So it's the same project that was approved by PNZ and sent to us recommendation of approval? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why is staff recommending this project to be approved? 
Um, the original staff report, um, as, as you can see, we do have policies within our future land use and our comprehensive plan um, that do support the 15% the um, as far as build out of the activity center. And so based on um, those items um, within the activity center and based on how our current policy is written, there is a 15% allocation, uh, which I wanna say is approximately 120 acres of the activity center, which if this applicant were to move forward and develop on the anticipated 20 acres of property, um, then therefore we would still be within our um, policy for the 15% of the activity center. So that was one of the, the strong suits of, the, of staff support at the time, as well as the fact that staff believed that the applicant would still remain under the original 17,000 um, average daily trip cap. Okay. Um, so when, let me see where am I, I don't want to miss my questions here. What was the date that this application first came in? Um, the application came in uh, sometime in 2022, I want to say June. I, I don't recall exactly what the application date was, but I know it was, uh, I believe, June or uh, between June and August of 2022. 22? Yeah, and the applicant can probably uh, better clarify that. Okay, and uh, the bill that just passed, when did it pass? That bill um, has passed and comes into effect July 1st. July 1st. Of this year. So is it safe to say you can't change the rules of a game in the middle of a game? Um, in, in, in which regards, Commissioner? I'm sorry. Well, um, it was mentioned that um, the changes that they or the addition that they want to make will fall under this bill. No, I think I think uh, what the commissioner was saying is that there is a bill that's coming which can um, add to the multifamily request within the city. Right. So those rules don't apply to this project now because this request came in before the bill passed. Correct, and I don't, I, don't, I don't believe this, uh, this request is for affordable housing, per se. Okay, um, let's see what else I have here. And the land, even if these apartments, additional apartments get built, that land can still be used as a mix, um, mixed use with room enough for other uh, businesses, commercials, or anything to be built around it? Um, correct, if, if no apartments were to be built, the applicant still does have entitlements to do. So it still so falls under mixed use? Um, it, it's not a mixed use planning development, it's still a business, but there are uh, several uses that the applicant can build out on the property. Okay, right, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Burbank? Oh, thank you, Commissioner McCool. Um, you, uh, Commissioner McCool used the phrase best numbers in her uh, speech there, and uh, you used the phrase IT, that's the International, that's the Institute of Traffic Engineers. And when you do traffic studies, you use what they call historical background information to make projections into the future. Is that correct? Correct. They say, they say historically a bank generates so many cars per day at peak hours, and that's how you generate how many trips are going to arrive at the end of the day. Uh, correct. The trip, trip generation menu, however, is updated um, per edition, and so numbers do change sometimes based on the studies that they do um, with current um, best available data of whatever study those engineers did. As a, as a performer design professional, I don't agree with the ITE. I don't think that they're keeping up because Commissioner McCool has made the argument for the school board that we just, it, the world is different now than it was just a few short years ago. More people are working from home, more people are taking their kids out of schools, less more people are shopping from home. I don't quite, I don't think that their counts are uh, no longer reflect reality. Uh, but there's nothing we do about that. That's what our rules say. This is what you use. I just want to put that out there for consideration because I don't know, did we, when this recent study was done, did we actually go out and do counts 
and compare them to what we thought they should be based on the last issue of the ITE? No, the, the number the number that was uh, produced by our consultant was he took the uh, entitlement, which was a 900,000 square feet of retail, mm -hmm. and so he then produced the uh, that the number of trips based on the ITE menu um, of what 900,000 square feet of retail would generate. I, once again, I don't think there are quite as many cars on the road as they projected there would be. Mm -hmm. I base that one on just driving the roads. I don't think they're as busy as they as they might want to be. And, and I go to places now that normally pre-COVID would have a packed house, and now there's only a third of the people there. I was at the Sons of Italy just a few short weeks ago for their Wednesday night spaghetti dinner. I remember that used to be standing room only, and only a third of the room was full. I just want to toss that out there just to give the commission something to think about. Is it, and something I guess for us to think about, what uh, edition are we using right now, the IT, what year was it published? It's the 11th edition. And you know this was published, I believe, last year. Last year? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so they're still looking two, year, two or three years back then. Thank you, Mr. Rees. No problem. Commissioner Jody Lee. Thank you, Mayor. Before we, I so I wanted, you're going to get to the applicant and his attorney. I'm kind of curious what they've got to say about everything that's been going back and forth. Yeah, they have to, uh, they have to submit their presentation now as soon as, uh, we get, do you have your question is for them? Okay, Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Yes, thank you. I didn't realize I had a, a documentation in my folder here. So I'm just curious to see, um, there's an email here that says, uh, from the mayor saying, have they agreed of any of the two offers made by the city? Can we know what those two offers were since I was not part of it? You should know what one of them is, Commissioner Vila Vasquez, because the city manager sat down with every single commissioner and talked to us about, I believe it was the proportion of fair share, Mr. Chisholm? Neither have I. Did you not meet with every single commissioner like you did with me? I don't recall if I met with everybody or not. <laughs> we have talked about this a few times. Okay. So can we find out what the two offers were? Why? Or the uh, agreements? Mm -hmm. Joe, do you want to answer or you want me to? Sh um, I'll, I'll let you answer, go ahead. Thank you yeah, so no much. <laughs> One of them was the proportion of fair share calculation, which Joe referred to, and the other was that second trip. Um, I don't remember what you called it, the one. Traffic equivalency matrix. Yes, the traffic equivalency, those were the two. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner McCool, and then we're going to go to the applicant. Thank you. Uh, from what I understood, because um, I've had several meetings on this with city staff, as I dis disclosed, and I asked about the prop share, and it was my understanding that legal or planning went back to the applicant uh, regarding what these would be. I think that some of the things prior to had been discussed, taking out this portion completely, the acreage, and uh, the addition? I, my, I, the city manager had those discussions. He was basically leading those discussions. Show and I were both there. So, I mean, I guess I'm not clear on what you're asking me. So, listen, I think that what okay. we're getting down to is this email, which just needs to be brought out into the light. There was an email that went out from the applicant's attorney. It went to the Honorable Mayor Avila requesting a meeting to discuss with you the pending application to increase the multifamily units and the annexation of additional 26 acres into the Deltona Village PUD. Based upon the recent media reports, I believe this this request is consistent with your position to increase the density of mixed uses in Deltona and create a town center in the Deltona Village BPUD. We look forward to meeting with you soon. I believe the email that went back from the mayor um, says, or the, uh, Joe, have they agreed, asking Joe Ruiz, have they agreed to any of the offers made by the city? The two offers made by the city, I believe, was to pay their proportionate fair share and to accept the traffic study. Is that correct? 
But Commissioner McCook, can you finish reading all the emails? Yes, I will. Obviously, for the residents here, this is public record. Yeah. So this implementation of putting this in a folder as a gotcha email type of overdue, it's, it's going nowhere. But so the rest finish, of the, means, the emails. I will, since I have the floor, I'll finish here. Then from Mr. Ruiz, he replied back to the mayor. At this time, the application remains unchanged, which I'm going to say alludes to the fact that even though presented with the application and the options, the applicant seeks to move forward to the rehearing as the original proposal, as if nothing had been presented, right? And then what I see is that there is a meeting or a message from the mayor that goes back to the applicant that says, Ms. Booker, respectfully, I'm going to decline the meeting. And I believe at this juncture, the mayor had met with the applicant and the uh, developer a couple of times when what he just said. And he says, while I want to see a city center or downtown in that area, I will not at the expense of our residents or the future city. Either proposal the city has made is extremely reasonable. And I think that what's trying to be met here is some fear porn tactic that somehow the mayor has violated sunshine here by saying what his position was. And I don't see a position in my opinion stated, but I'm not legal. So if you want to see this email, it's public record here. That's what I'm talking about. And I would just, I've seen it. I do not believe that the mayor violated Sunshine with regard to the document he sent. And, and it's, again, I don't know who intimated that, but this is for everybody to see to make their own decisions. Nobody got this. It's a public record. Nobody else was included on this except for the mayor, the city manager, the deputy city manager, and the and legal department, and the applicant's attorney. So I don't understand, unless you guys have now been made part of sunshine violation, where it is a sunshine violation. Or that there is a position succinctly stated that he was taking a position. So I'm just trying to clear that up. Appreciate it. Uh, I have one just simple question for you, Ms. Ruiz. In your experience, I know you've worked in other municipalities, right, across the state. Do you feel like it's very unreasonable for any of us on this dais to request that somebody that's ingrained within our community, right, uh, accept the proportion of fair share or a traffic equivalency matrix? Do you think that's unfair on my behalf to ask for that? I believe it's- um, In your opinion. There are legitimate questions to be had regarding traffic based on changes from 2009 to trends today. Um, so I have seen it where um, staff has moved forward with the data that was originally approved and I've also seen it to where there have been updates to the development agreements based on the changes of the um, impacts um, that projects may have um, as the applicant is requesting changes to the original application for approval. I appreciate it. At this time, I appreciate Mr. Reese. At this time, we'll call the applicant forward so they can work on their presentation. Ms. Booker. Good evening. Uh, Kim Booker, Booker & Associates, 1019 Town Center Drive, Orange City, Florida, 32763. Uh, we have a, uh, do you have the, the PowerPoint? Well, they have written copies of it. I don't see it No, the current one was sent. Okay, we haven't. Here we go. Right here. Okay. While she's getting that ready, the, as to the email, I'd like to make sure that the clerk attaches it to the record uh, in the minutes, since uh, it's already been read. It's a clear indication that the mayor has uh, already rendered a decision in this case prior to quasi-judicial proceeding. It's like a point of order, to the city record. attorney. Have I rendered my decision based on that email? 
your legal expertise? Not for an argument. It's just no, for asking for. I mean, to be the applicant's right. allowed okay. to do what she's trying to do. I've already said publicly that I don't believe that is the case. But we're entitled to attach it to the record and have it in the minutes and indicate uh, in our uh, case that. Is your microphone on, Ms. Booker? Yes. Okay. I can hear it. I think everybody else can hear. I'm going to give it a copy to the clerk. Okay, we uh, would like at the uh, onset here, we've had several uh, concerns given to us about um, the 20, approximately 26 acres known as the ICC project or uh, portion of this property, which is around the concrete plant. Um, we have two properties that we were requesting to annex. Uh, one is uh, 0.61 acres, which is directly behind the um, theater uh, that creates, there's a little uh, 0.61 acres that is a gap between the theater and the um, new phase two of Amazon, the two million industrial site that was approved by the city. Um, the ICC property, several people had some concerns about adding that, although that property has already been uh, identified in the DRI and the development order as having vested trips that apply to the overall project. But we would like to request that the um, that portion of our application be with are tabled right now and uh, advertised at some later date, um, if we have no objections to that. Is there an objection by this uh, city commission? Basically, just take out the 26, what, 26.57 yeah. acres and s s separate, it keep it active, and just put it on file for later for a later date. We would like to leave the what we call the luck parcel, which is the little square right behind the theater, right. in, but remove the ICC parcel, which is the portion of it that is adjacent to the um, concrete plant. Right, which is the 26. The large, point. almost 26 acres. Yes. Objection here. Can I? Mr. Mayor, if I could um, make a comment here. We have spent a significant amount of money on advertising and staking the property. And so, I mean, I would request if the applicant wants to go forward and you two and, and the commission is, finds it acceptable if we can, in the spirit of our pass-through fees, which of course none of that has happened with regards to this application because it's been an old one that's been around, that there, the fees incurred in that property coming back um, be passed on to the applicant. We have no objection to that. Okay. I'll go down the line. Stephen, uh, Commissioner Caldwell, do you have any objection? I have no objection. Commissioner Jody Lee? No. Commissioner Dana McCool? I, I would like you to go back to the slide uh, prior to Ms. Booker, if you could. Okay. Uh, request. So this is part of the ordinance here, request to amend, and then we have our punctuation, right, and rezone an extra 2657. So what you're asking Ms. Booker is to remove the 2657 out. It's actually 0.61 of that is the luck parcel. We'd like to leave that in, but the 25.48, I think it is, parcel uh, for the ICC property, we would like to take to table. So I'm trying to go back. The reason I have a puzzled look on okay, my face is- look, here's a, here's a picture, my yep. help. Uh, if you look directly behind the theater, there's a green patch, mm -hmm. okay, on the, uh, on the west side, which is towards you. Mm -hmm. um, that is the, what I call the luck parcel. That is what we'd like to leave in. The other remainder of it, the almost 26 acres, is the ICC project, which is up here, which is around the concrete plant. So the upper the far, part of East Graves Avenue. Far north side. It goes around the interstate and has a concrete plant in the middle of it. Regarding the, um, so we have married together a lot of parcels here, like in some of the last um, 
in some of the last. Uh, well, there's a lot of misinformation that was just stated that I'd like to clarify. Because sure. This was part of a DRI that was done in 03. So, okay. That, that ICC parcel was actually approved as part of a, uh, an ordinance that was approved back in 07. It, the city, the city attorney Roland Blossom at the time, failed to record that development agreement is the only reason it doesn't have zoning at this point in time. So the sole reason for my client applying now for that property to be included in the Deltona Village PBUD is to resolve that issue without asking for those additional densities that were provided and additional development that were approved back then and to clean it up and basically bring it into the Deltona Village P BPUD with the existing, the existing density and intensity without asking for anything additional. The 900 square feet of uh, traffic trips have been applied to that area. It was part of the 09 and 2010 traffic analysis. That was part of the analysis that was also done in the DRI. It was included and has been acknowledged in 2016 in a prior ordinance uh, for the freestanding Deltona, um, uh, freestanding Deltona, I think, hospital. In 2016, you acknowledged and incorporated paragraphs 11 and 10 from the development agreement that this area was incorporated and vested according to the trips, the trip reservations that are under a development agreement. And there's been a lot of conversation about the today's numbers. Well, in, this, in the United States, we have certain private property rights. And in development, there's a reason for development orders. They are to protect the developer and allow them to develop their property with certain expectations. This property was part of a DRI done for the Southwest Activity Center back in 03. This property had already had at that time substantial development rights given to it. The equivalency matrix that's been referenced numerous times was in that DRI. When Deltona came to the, the DeMarsh family at that point in time and asked for them to consent to the abandonment of the DRI, this was in 09 and, and 10, significant traffic analysis was done at that point in time. There was traffic mitigation set forth, and I'm getting out, off my presentation here, so <laughs> I can tell you from this page here, you'll see the bottom of the development agreement. This development agreement was adopted in 2010. It incorporated the equivalency matrix from the DRI that was from 03, 2003. That equivalency matrix was adopted with the purpose to allow flexibility in the activity center because the goal was to attract development, attract jobs to this area in Deltona. The equivalency, and I want to go back to this offer. We never received any offers. I sent emails asking for what those offers were. I never got a response. So when you talk about the equivalency matrix, I don't have a clue as to what that offer is. Okay, the cost of improvements, it says specifically in the development agreement, as you'll see at the top of the page, start the mitigation plan for the traffic that was required. Each one of those items were required to be done and have been done at this point in time. The mitigation plan has been satisfied. The, at the bottom of the page, you will see the cost of improvements set forth in paragraphs A, B, and C above, for which the owner developer shall be responsible, <coughs> shall be limited to $1,912,727, or such lesser mitigation cost as may be required by the county. The county was involved in every, in this, every aspect of this. Paragraph 11, which is part of the development agreement, which is adopted by the city of Deltona and is an enforceable agreement with vested rights. It provides the trip generation utilized for this project as approved by the city and county was based on the approval, total trip generation for phase one of the DRI, which is what, where these numbers come from. By its approval and execution of this agreement, the city hereby agrees to issue and vest to the owner developer the following net new external daily trip reservations by phase and the net new PM peak hour external trip reservations by phase within the interstate 472 area-wide DRI. There was 900,000 square feet of retail commercial, 1,141 daily uh, peak hour trips, 17,808 trips that were vested, 
under this agreement. Here's the analysis. Here, this is, comes from the actual TIAs that were done. It includes, I'll, I'll break down, I won't go through all the numbers, but at the bottom you'll see um, in the uh, 900 on the, the, the county build out shows 900 in the middle of the page, 1,141 and 17,808 by phase. That was done at the time in 2010. Regardless of whether it's been years since it was done, that is a, this is a vested development agreement in which our, my client is entitled to those trips. Specifically then on, um, this is on, goes further to say, the subject property is planned as part of the Interstate for, uh, State Road 472 area-wide DRI, which is where this, it, this project originated. Therefore, the land uses are subject to the DRI development equivalency matrix. Again, this came from the DRI. The Interstate 4 State Road 472 Activity Center DRI Development Equivalency Matrix as obtained from the City of Deland DRI Development Order, which is where the copy of this equivalency matrix came from, was included as Exhibit C, attached here to and incorporated by this reference. The development equivalency matrix is based on the trip generation rates for the DRI. Therefore, utilization of the matrix by the applicant will not require additional traffic studies by the city or county. No trip reservations here under shall expire if the owner submits a final site plan application for any portion of the development within the C city TIA phase one on or before January 30, 2015, a final site plan application for any portion of the development of the county TIA phase one on or before December 30, 2020, and the owner developer has paid the fair share assessment or impact mobility fees required by the city and county for the development of such phases or subphases. In such event, the owner developer shall be entitled to retain all all trips reserved as stated herein for all other phases or subphases. Okay, the equivalency matrix. There appears to be some misunderstanding of what the equivalency matrix is intended to do. It is intended to create, and you'll please note that the permissible uses includes multifamily on the matrix. It is intended to provide a, a matrix in which you can replace and exchange certain uses establish the trips allocated for that particular use and exchange it for another use. It's intended to protect the development from not exceeding the trips that would be vested, in this case 17,808, from the overall project. So if you change to use from, from retail commercial, which is what all the traffic was based on, which is the highest generator of trips, and you made it multifamily, you would reduce the amount of retail commercial square footage that you would have in order to be able to have a multifamily uh, use. And the trips then would not exceed, you would only be permitted so, so many trips and the trips could, will be allocated based on those uses. Specifically, Exhibit C of the development agreement provides the city may approve an increase or decrease of a particular land use within the approved development program identified on Exhibit B by using a conversion table, the matrix, attached as Exhibit C, which is based on an equivalent peak hour directional trip ends. Use of the matrix may increase or decrease the total amount of each land use by no more than the amount allowed for in the sub substantial deviation criteria identified in Chapter 380.06.19b, which is no longer um, enforceable or invalid. Florida statutes, unless the development order is amended to accommodate such a change. Greater changes than those discussed above, considered cumulatively, shall be subject to normal development order amendment process. Greater changes from those discussed above will be subject to normal development processes. Okay, in this case, we are asking to reduce the actual impact by having a, a multifamily that generates fewer trips. We make every, every report that you have, including the additional traffic study that we disagree with totally, um, and we'll have the traffic engineer speak directly to that, say that this, this request does not exceed the trips vested. It doesn't even come close to the, the amount of trips vested. I think we're at 17% of the trips in the to over the overall entire project. We have a letter that was issued by uh, Jane Chang in December of 2019, 
which acknowledges and states, with regard to the Deltona Village BPUD, Ordinance Number 21-2009, the City recognizes and otherwise reaffirms the vested entitlements outlined within the approved development agreement and accompanying master development plan, overall development plan, including but not limited to DRH's satisfaction of all condi conditions within the timeframes established in paragraph 11 entitled trip reservations as to, as to all TIA phases and subphases. Ms. Also, Booker, the city thank you. You're over your time capacity. Excuse me? You're, you're over your time. <laughs> I'm an applicant. Wow. Never had a time for evidence to be Fit, There's dis always been a, city clerk has the uh, presenters never had a time in the past? The presenters get 15 minutes. It's the turn. Okay. Uh, How much time do you need, Ms. Booker? Then you How go into How much evidence. time do you need? I need at least another 10 minutes. You can make that call, Mayor. I can, I mean, I can speed it up here. Yeah. You have go. five minutes, Ms. Booker. Okay, well, I think you've gotten the point that the entitlements are obviously under the development agreement are provided for. The vested trips are provided for. Volusia County School Board has indicated no mitigation is required. You can't require or deny this application without at least proposing some mitigation threat thresholds, which the school board has indicated do not, aren't required. The multifamily, uh, incorrect, which was stated earlier. The only thing that was changed in the 2018 um, uh, request was from a conditional use to a permitted use. Uh, multifamily has always been a, a permitted use, but the number was changed at that point in time. It was changed, well, it was changed, when it was changed to 414, it, it was made a conditional use, and then it was made a, permanent, a permitted per permissible use in 2018. The staff report um, also confirmed that 238 units would be within the 15%, which has already been state, uh, stated here tonight, the 15%, so it's consistent with the comp plan, the, uh, Florida, the future land use um, number two specific land use guidelines for multifamily within the, the Act, Daltona Activity Center. It's consistent with, um, the, it's within the, the vested trips. It is within the, uh, and it, that's been stated over and over in the staff report and in, in your own consultants report that it is under the, the vested trip allocations. Um, it's consistent with the comp plan. It's, uh, it has no impacts on the environment or natural resources that were considered negative in this case. The impact on the economy of the affected area, I think it's very important to note, um, and the most important factor here, other than the consistency with the, the comp plan, is that the impact fees uh, alone in this case are going to be over, we're looking at $8,736,347. Of that Integra, um, they are going to generate to the city $578,976. Volusia County will get $1,622,828 for a total of $2,201,804. Road impact fees, uh, as I stated again, will total $8,726,347. The benefits proposed, obviously we have two million, you just approved two million square feet for Amazon. Uh, I don't know where you expect them to live. In Deltona, you have a total of 500 um, apartments and uh, 301 of those that are being constructed right now, 319 are under construction, 301 are the Integra project. You have a population of almost 100,000 people and you've approved a $2 million second phase, 2 million square feet second phase of Amazon and you have no apartments for people to live in. So, and, and the, the mention of a statute or adoption of legislation that doesn't pertain to this project in any way is deflecting the nature of this. Um, also, there have been almost current to date about $2.6 million in road improvements that have been done for this project. We project it'll probably be closer to $3.6 million before it's done. So there have been a number of roadway improvements made and that were part of the mitigation and that were taken into consideration at the time this development order was approved. Traffic today is not affected by this particular project. There's not that many projects that are actually in the ground and, and creating traffic. You have traffic 
traffic that's been created by Amazon, you have traffic that's been created by a number of other projects that you haven't taken into consideration. And the calculation that was done by this consultant, uh, and I'll let the traffic engineer speak to that directly, but it is significantly flawed. Uh, and because this project is vested, because it, it had permitted uses of multifamily, there, at this point in time, and I think Joe said that, uh, we are not required to pay an additional prop share than what we have already paid and vested under this agreement, under the development order. So to make, to throw out statements like that, to inflame people in the crowd when you know that there is a vested right under a development agreement, which initiated from a DRI, might I add, uh, is, is to deflect from the real issue. There, there is no prop share that is due now. There is no additional traffic analysis that should be required. The equivalency matrix provides for that to be done and we have established trips. We haven't requested any additional trips. We're not, we're only asking to utilize the existing trips that are reserved. So, um, when we talk about antiquated traffic reports, when you have a development agreement, that is irrelevant. Thank you. So before we continue, we were asking Commissioner McCool if she's okay with uh, amending what they want so they can remove that property out of there. I'm not until this process is finished because my problem is that we have piecemealed this area together and we have gotten to where we are right here. And even back when this was being done in 2018, there were concerns. If you want to pull up the minutes, or I'll be happy to supply them for you from June 4th, July, regarding this very matter that he stated, a commissioner stated that he was concerned about picking apart elements of the BPUD and that there are issues with concurrency infrastructure and capacity for water and sewer. And he stated that he did not want to give up the city's right to review a project to ensure it's planned so the city has some control over things like easements, dedicated areas, and the such. My concern also is that we're drawing down information from the DRI, which was sunset, and the DRI was sunset because it wasn't productive. There was no marketing out there for that area, so it wasn't profitable. That's why the DRI was sunset, and we're pulling this information. So, so Commissioner out. McCool, you're No, I'm not me? good with okay, it. Okay, you're not good. No, I'm Commissioner not good with Vasquez? It. Yes, Commissioner Burbank? Yes, and for this specific matter, I'm a yes as well. So it's uh, six to, uh, sorry, five to one. So we can remove, Commissioner Burbank, did you just ask what you say yes to? No, it's not 26 acres, it's 25. It, Okay, let's move forward. So does, I see Commissioner McCool is on the board. Do you have questions for the developer? I, I, have, I have questions and the applicant has said that the prop share is basically erroneous. And so I need clarification on this prop share because this is a thing holding us from voting on this. If you're going to build, what do you have vested? What is vested in my understanding? And I need this cleared up. Everything that was done for this, the major amendment, the capping, the uncapping and giving the developer unfettered capacity and uh, unfettered access was done predicated on 414 units, not 652. Everything that they did in this area was predicated on 414 units. So now moving forward, when we agreed as a city that we were gonna let them incorporate all these small pieces that was predicated on that area for 414 units. Now we're coming back because you're adding units, then we're starting a new ball game here. And we're starting a new ball game with the traffic studies. And when you talk about the traffic studies, the reality is that there's a new proportionate share here. So I need to hear from either legal, the city manager, the planner. I need to understand what the county has said about this, the city has said about this. Is there or is there not a prop share? Is that just visiting us from magic fairyland? Because somebody's gonna have to pay it and it's not gonna be my constituents. They pay for a lot of developer stuff. So I'm just asking. 
Uh, so, McCool, to answer your questions, originally the commission had concerns based on traffic concerns. And so that was part of the original denial of the application. So what staff did to uh, address part of those concerns uh, was to look at the traffic numbers um, back in 2009, and then we had our consultant look at the trip generation rates today and convert those over to modern day, um, being as the applicant was amending the original development program, which was the 414 units approved by the commission back in 2010 to change it to 652 units in modern day and modern time. Um, so part of the concerns were traffic, and so therefore after the denial, um, staff did look into those items as far as um, updating um, for you all's concerns and, and direction, updating the numbers to see how that compares in modern day. So I need to understand this also, the applicant, whoever wants to answer this, we talked about the applicant has just stated that the roads have already been done, um, this has been done for this project and other things have been done before being like part of the extra 262. I need explanation. What has been done so far for the additional 262 apartments? What type of infrastructure has already been done for the extra 262 apartments? The trips, I think you, you, you don't grasp the trips. I really do grasp it. I grasp what the old study you know, says and I grasp what the new study was says. Based on the number of trips, the traffic mitigation plan was based on the number of trips. The, the prop share that was provided was based on the construction of improvements. You're receiving impact fees, you're receiving sales tax, you're, receive, you're gonna receive approximately half a grand a year in, in property taxes from Integra if both of these projects are done. You're receiving uh, a, a number of um, increased expenses, but there is no prop share that is due. The multifamily was a permitted use. The equivalency matrix addresses multifamily. The trips are vested. They were already accounted for. We're not increasing the number of trips. We paid for 17,808 trips. Okay? We have reduced the trips, or the square footage of the, of the uh, retail commercial to utilize the multifamily trips. It's the same, we switched them out. We paid for 1708, we got prop share for 1708, we, we, increased, we improved all the intersections for that 1708, we have the right to those trip reservations. And if you, you can use them on multifamily, you could use them on office, you could use them on retail. They switch out under the matrix. The purpose of the matrix was to make it flexible so the land uses could be shifted around for a mixed use development. So can somebody explain to me why this is even happening here? Why they even need permission for the 262 if it's already vested? We, we would, there's not we, a problem, don't like I don't understand. Do, actually, because the matrix would permit us to have those increases without having this. So I would like an opinion, please, whether it be legal or planning, because there is a, there are different new numbers. We didn't just pull them out of the hat. Somebody needs to step in here because we're going to go round and round with this argument here. So this is unbelievable. So, uh, Commissioner McCool, the request by the applicant um, to up the unit cap there, so originally, as has been discussed, there was an original unit cap of 414. Um, yes, the uh, application, or at that time, or the, the, the PUD was approved for 900,000 square feet of retail. Uh, however, the cap of conversion uh, that was allowed was for the 414 units. Uh, so therefore, the applicant is amending the development program as originally approved to now um, propose and request that the cap be increased from 414 to 652 multifamily dwelling units. Go into it one more time for me about prop share. Why do we why do we have an engineer, you know, and why do we have th these numbers if this isn't true? Because here's the thing, you are granted based, you are granted an unlimited density based on the fact that you were only gonna put 414 units there. So I'm reading, I'm sorry, let me finish here. I'm reading every single commission meeting that was done, every development order back from 2010. Right, and this is what this says. It is a new ball game. When you amend something, it becomes a new project. This is a new project here. So I, I want to understand that the sheriff, that the city, 
uh, the prop share of the city and the prop share of the county, maybe? I don't know. What was the recommendation? What was the statement from the engineer? Uh, so staff did not get any written statement from, from the county. We did. I did reach out to um, make sure that what, uh, what was thought or the thought process of um, in, in the event that a development program would change, um, would it be um, practical to um, update or to request an update to the proportionate fair share? And so the nod that I received from the county, one, uh, one of the county's traffic engineers is that, uh, yes, it would make sense that based on the change to development uh, program, that if it was uh, the request of the city or the city commission to amend that and update that, that that would be a practical and a reasonable vote. And I, as I, am I to understand, this is, uh, listen, it's just going to fly from here. Is it my understanding that the staff's recommendation is to approve with the condition that the prop share is met? That is if the trip uh, cap is increased to the um, number found by our engineer with modern day ITE manual. So if, if it was to be, at that, at that point it'd be essentially a trade off. The applicant would get more trips based on what the, um, what the, it is anticipated today by modern numbers, and therefore that would uh, call for the prop fair share to be increased to that uh, 10 million in change number. Thank you. Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion, please. I hereby move to approve ordin ordinance number 04-2023, approving the amendment to the overall development plan, master development plan, increasing the number of multifamily unit allocation for the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units. Amendment to the development agreement approved by the ordinance number 21-2009 and rezone an additional 26.57 acres of land to be included within the Deltona Village BPUD and a condition that a new proportion fair share agreement be required for the difference in transportation impacts found within BCC's technical memo dated April 28, 2023, if the tri trip caps are increased. So there is a motion and a second. Um, unfortunately, there was a request to minimize the acreage, so that motion needs to be amended to the correct acreage, not the 26.57, as they've asked for that to not be included in you this. Didn't have a motion now. Yeah, you didn't. You, Mr. Mayor. We all agreed on this. But you didn't do you, a motion. You have to have a motion to do that. Okay. You all just said yet, yeah, you know, you asked him. Okay. Do you still want to leave out the one point, the piece, Ms. Booker, the piece of property, do you still want to leave it out? Yeah. Okay. What is the exact amount that we're not leaving out so I can make a motion? 26, I mean 25.96. All right. So, Commissioner Vila Vasquez, if you can please retract your motion so I can make another, I can ask for another motion to retract the pieces of property that the DeMarsh uh, family would like to remove from this specific contract or vote. I retract my motion for now. Okay. So, can somebody please make a motion? We just voted on this. I thought we did, but. Uh, Can you please turn on your mic? Okay. Little thing on my tablet here says I can't push my mo motion button, so I have to do it out loud. Um, I move to approve ordinance number 04 2023, amending the Deltona Business PUD overall development, master development plan, increasing the number of multifamily alloc unit allocation from the BPUD from 414 units to 615 units, and amendment to the um, development agreement approved by ordinance number 21 2009. Okay. City Attorney, could you please tell us what the motion has to read so somebody up here can give the motion? The, Thank you, Commissioner. The, the motion needs to be that you're removing the 25.96 acres from the Deltona Village. Is it, I forget, is it BPUD? The annexation request. The annexation request. You're removing it. I just yes. didn't include it. 
He, he just made the motion without it. Oh, okay, so he's excluding? My, my motion yes. did not include that 26 acres. However, there is a 0.61 piece that the applicant is trying to keep in there. Correct. Including the 1.6 acres. <laughs> so can you make the motion just including that or do you want us to completely remove? Well, th there may be different views up there with regards to, you know, once you remove this, you know, what everybody's position may be, I don't know. It's, it's really up to, the, you know, the chair's discretion. If you want to make it that way and see what happens or do you want to specifically re remove the 25.96? Or, ta right. not, or table it. You could table it. So the condition was to table, excuse me. The condition was to table it at the developer's expense. Yes. That's what for the condition was at the To be to. determined at a future meeting. Okay. Yeah. Once again, how many acres is that, please? That we're excluding. Six. Okay. So, so whoever makes a motion, makes a motion and not include 25.9. Commissioner Codwell, you want to give it a go? Please turn uh, on your mic. What? Can, uh, your mic, Commissioner Codwell. Wait, Mr. Caldwell, I'm sorry, Commissioner. We, I want legal to, and I want us to understand here that we're making the motion and a condition that a new proportionate fair share agreement be They're required. two separate items. We're Pardon? gonna do them separately. Uh, okay. So I'm going to make a motion to approve with removal of the 25.96 mm -hmm. acres for ordinance number 21-2009. Okay. To, to be, be tabled. tabled. And, to tab and to table the proportionate share. At the developer's cost. At the developer's cost. And a date, and a future, at a future date. At a future date. Okay. Is there a second? What? The crop share is not on the table at all. We haven't requested any we're not, additional trip. And we're, we're not, we're do, dude, this is we're not, not what we're talking that. about. We're just removing so Basically, the motion is just to approve the, the apartments, it's a, but take out the 25.96. Commissioner and Jody Lino. The motion currently on the table is to remove the 25.96 acres from to table the or to, to sorry to table that from ordinance number 21 2009 is to remove that okay to remove that from there at the developer's expense and, and at a future date for and then to be brought back up at a future date okay. but to leave the apartments in this is yeah they're two separate things I second, but I also want the uh, city clerk to read the motion again, please. But, it's convoluted. Would, would you mind reading us the motion, Ms. Booker, the way you'd like it to sound? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, city, city clerk, it's a motion to table the 25.96 acres of land with the condition that it is... Uh, the fees are paid at the developer's expense at a later date. Did I get that correct? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's, it needs to, we need to say it, the, it would be heard in a, at a future date okay. and the developer will, sh will pay the expenses of advertising and posting and any other expenses connected with it. Um, where? Okay. Okay, so let's go. So table the 25.96 to be heard at a later date and fees to be paid at the developer's expense. Advertisement fees. All fees and expenses. All fees, Liz, it needs to be all fees because this, this will go through the pass-through. Advertisement fees. So it would be all fees incurred by the city. All fees incurred. Have we at any point approved the additional Hold on, apartment? hold on. <coughs> Commissioner Burbank. Table the 25.96 to be heard at a later date. Okay. And all fees incurred to be paid at the developer's expense. All righty. Okay, there's a motion. 
by Commissioner Codwell. Second. second. There's a second by Commissioner Jody Lee. Before we vote, do we need to hear from the public? Because I, this is a quasi-judicial. Um, sure, if you want. I mean, yes. I mean, I'm not saying you Is there any public comment on specifically removing this from, I mean, I, I know it was just brought up. Yes, there's three public comments, but they are, are without standing. That's there, okay. So there is nobody here with standing. Correct. But, but they can speak also. They, they can, you don't have to have, you just have to know they don't have standing, but okay. they're still entitled to speak. Can we ask them if they want to comment on this or on the next vote that's coming up? Albert Bryant, would you like to comment on this? Okay. David Sosa. Well, I'm going to comment now, anyway, just to get it out of the way. Okay. What a fiasco. Um, Maritza, you made a statement. Do we change the rules in the middle of the game? Do we do that? Absolutely we do it, all the time. I mean, if you look at public comment, that was changed on the fly without any consent from you guys up there. So now public comment was no longer recorded, there's no longer min me meeting minutes on it, people at home can't watch it the next day. So do you change stuff on the fly? Absolutely, you change it mid-game all the time. Okay, um, Marsha, you sat in a meeting with the city manager regarding this issue. You're asked a question, you say, yeah, I was there, but I don't know what the hell was being talked about. I, I mean, and we pay that. her that? Jody, you pay her for that? Is that acceptable for you? Me as a taxpayer, no, it's not. Again, pass-through ordinance. Here we are, six months, I've asked about it every month that we've had here because we've had a lot of meetings canceled lately for whatever reason. We are still messing around with the pass-through ordinance, but yet we talk about chickens and charging people for extra eggs if they have extra eggs they can't eat. Where is the priorities of this city? Sunshine Law. Commissioner David Sosa, or sorry, former commissioner, please stick to the topic at hand. What is your grievance well, I'm, with I'm, this topic? I'm getting there. You know, there's just a lot of things to consume. I understand that, but let's well, get to the Would you like me to save it for the next vote? Whatever you like. As you long know, as it I'll, pertains I'll, I'll, to this, it's what matters. I will discuss the rest on the next vote. Okay. Al Albert Bryant, please. You know, I've sat back here for two meetings now and watched this clown show. Here's the thing. She's changing what they want to do in the middle of the process, which is her developmental right. But if y'all can't make a motion that's proper, that could actually end up costing her money, or Mr. DeMar's money, costing us money as citizens, I would tell y'all right here, right now, take a breath, take five minutes, figure it freaking out. Because she wants to table 26 acres. At least I got that part of it right. Now, one thing I did hear, though, is the fact that I think it reams, reads right from what I heard on the 2010 contract that if they have a set amount of square footage, they're allowed to develop. Period, full stop a set amount. They can either do the multifamily or they can do it in commercial. Everybody knows the commercial market right now is crap. So they're gonna take and develop multifamily. So that means they can't develop so many. Now here's the question. He doesn't own all that property in there. He owns most of it, yes. But there are a few parcels 
that he doesn't own. This should not affect those parcels at all. So you wonder if that's actually been communicated to the people who own those pieces of property in the middle of all this. Now, here's the other thing that I'm hearing here. We keep bringing up traffic. Well, because of the 2010 contract, it was a vested contract with a set amount. You have to work with two sets of amounts, square footage that is developable, and how many traffic's in and out. There's so many trips per unit for apartments. They're adding 220 some odd units. Multiply that times trips per unit. That tells you how many parcels he can't develop commercially now or square footage wise. He can't develop. Why is that so hard to understand? <clears throat> Here's the other thing that has come to mind. I stood here last year when y'all decided, a commission as a whole, to give away 10 freaking acres. I begged y'all to get something in return. What was I told? Oh, it's gonna help commercial development. You know what I begged for that night? I beg for the fact that y'all take and trade that 10 acres of right of way for 10 acres of right of way for Rhode Island. I got laughed out of the building. Literally, y'all laughed me out of the building. Thought I was foolish. But you want to know something? I don't look foolish at all now. Matter of fact, I look pretty damn smart now. At, thank you, Adam Vasquez, please. Good evening, um, Adam Vasquez. I, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but it dawned on you know something one of you guys said has has me up here. So someone argued um, while you guys were debating this that there are less cars on the road post COVID than pre COVID, and that that's why these trips. And if you figure out a traffic study from 2010 and they've already figured out year after year after year that now it must be less cars because less of us are driving post COVID. That, that this, I don't know what roads you're driving on, sir. The roads are definitely more congested. They're more dangerous. I'm hoping that you guys are doing something to expand the capacity to fix the problem. Howland was, was a four lane highway. 10 years ago, and it still is the same four lane highway. They made some improvements at, at the intersection for Graves, but other than that, it's the, it goes back to the same exact roadway that it is. And since you brought up Sons and Daughters of Italy, and that's down off of Doyle in my neck of the hood, that road actually, um, they reduced the speed limit about three years ago due, due to, it used to be 45 before we built a subdivision down near Cortland, um, but, now that road's more congested because of development. So your solution was to reduce the speed limit from 45 to 40. So now it takes an extra five to 10 minutes to get the state road 415. So the traffic impacts are definitely there. You're gonna add 650, 200 more apartments or whatever. There's gonna be more cars on the road. I'm just wondering, I mean, it's kind of hard to fix a problem. Usually step one is acknowledging that it's there. Um, and so I was really troubled to hear you say that there's less cars on the road after COVID. Unfortunately, this state was run the right way, so we were only shut down for about, I don't know, a month, six weeks. So we all got back out on those roadways pretty quickly. The kids went back to school. We didn't have some communist run state here. Our, our, we, we ran it the right way. So there are, as, as such, people are moving into our state and there's more people on the road. That's why we need to, that, that's why they're building apartments. More people are coming here. So you, you guys gotta figure out, fix the problem, not say that, oh, there's less people since the pandemic. That's a crock. Thank you. Mayor, this ends public comment. All right, can we please vote specifically on the uh, tabling the 25.96 acres? Motion passes five to one. 
All right, we're gonna move forward with uh, Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Now you had, now you can do your other motion if you want. I hereby move to approve ordin orders number 04-2023, approving the amendment to the overall development plan, master development plan, increasing the number of multifamily unit allocation for the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units, amendment to the development agreement approved by ordinance number 21-2009, and rezone an additional 26, is that? Point six one acres of land to be included within the Deltona Village BPUD in a condition that a new proportionate fair share agreement be required for the difference in transportation impacts found within BC, BCC's technical memo dated April 28, 20, 2023, if the trip caps are increased. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Burbank. Mr. Mayor, I find that language to be muddy at the end there, the caveats there, because the developer has not agreed to a proportionate fair share, uh, and this says if the trip caps are increased, which this is going back and forth here, uh, because they're saying that the trip caps aren't uh, going to be increased. So basically, that caveat is unnecessary because we're not going to abide by it. It doesn't mean anything here. That part where it says, and a condition that a new proportionate fair share agreement be required for the difference in transportation impacts found within the BB, that means nothing. We've said that it means nothing. So it's baloney. It's a false sense of uh, it's baloney here to even have that in there. So the commission needs to understand, I think, and if legal could back me up or planning, that basically if we open okay a point this, of order, there's a motion on the floor. I'm trying to clarify the motion. She, I'm so sorry. She, you have, you, so you have the people right in front of us arguing that that's not what they want in the motion, Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Well, they need to come up to the podium and say it because we didn't hear it. I've been hearing them the we, whole time. We did not agree to any language, and no, nor was it proposed at any point regarding a, port, a cap for the prop share. So our, there is no agreement, there is no intention that there is any um, prop share payment to be considered. So I, I don't know where that language came from. Yeah, allow me to clarify. So that language was there in the event that the commission and the applicant were to agree to increase that cap, so therefore it would no longer be applicable based on the proposal of the applicant today. Um, so. Um, that would have to be removed from the motion, Commissioner Vasquez. Right. Before Commissioner Vila Vasquez makes her motion, I do have Jody Leesman, Commissioner Jody Leesman, trying to speak multiple times, and then I did have a question for the applicant because I find something a little peculiar. But go ahead, Commissioner Jody Lee. My big thing, I was just going to ask if, if Commissioner Vila or uh, I can't even tell you, you get this whole thing is just turn into a circus. If you can pull your motion back, and I'll say it a proper way just to get it out to very clean and get it over and done with, well, I mean, this one makes motion now. This has been twisted now like seven times. If, if you can. Let's if go. you pull yours back, I'll make a quick one. So I withdraw my motion. So I was trying to clarify that language. Basically, this is going to say that if we vote for this, at the, the, the 652, that there will not be a prop share, that this passes through with no prop share, no additional paying for any traffic, anything. And I want the commission to understand that if you vote for this, you're voting for it as it stands with nothing else going to this project. We don't get a prop share. Before they get we go, it without. I want it clarified. Before we go into that motion, I have a very quick question because I haven't had a chance to ask any questions. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go to whoever sure, wants to Mr. make the motion. For Ms. Booker. You stated several times that you never heard anything about the proportion of fair share or the traffic equivalency matrix, right? No, you said there were two offers on the table. No offers were ever made to us. I actually emailed you back and asked, what were those two offers? Nobody responded So you never heard me. of those? I did not know that there was two offers on the table of anything. When was the first time we, you heard of that? Uh, when I saw your email. No, when was the first time that you heard what the two offers were? I have 
I you have a clear gonna, idea of what, and so, today is so your first my question, time. So my question to you is, you just prepared a whole presentation specifically on, tra on traffic equivalency matrices and proportionate fair share because you knew somehow what they were. No, I'm just, I, I'm trying to figure the out. The equivalency matrix has been part of our argument since the very beginning. It's part of our motion for the rehearing. Okay. It's part of our original presentation. Okay, so. so the equivalency matrix is part of the development agreement and the DRI. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance 04-2023, approving the amendment of the overall development plan, master development plan, increased number of multifamily unit allocation for the BPUD 415 units to 652 units, amendment to the development agreement approved by ordinance number 21-2009. Is it second? That's right. It's a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee and a second by Commissioner Burbank. Wow. Can we please listen to public comment, and then we'll go to vote. I thought we heard them already. David Tosa. Okay. A couple things, you know, during the discussion this was brought up, and it's, you know, somehow the mayor committed a sunshine violation by sending emails to the applicant's attorney. Uh, I'm looking at these emails. And not once did he send it to anybody up there, therefore it's not a sunshine violation. So I don't know where that came from, but Mayor, if somebody's sticking in people's folders, you might wanna find out who. Um, now the mayor can discuss whatever he wants with staff or even the applicant. I wouldn't recommend talking to applicants because when you don't vote for something, they can say, hey, look, this happened. Now also the applicant's attorney I, I believe reference something how that you've already determined your vote by an email. Um, I'm, I'm reading the email right here. Respectfully, I'm going to decline a meeting. Didn't say I'm not gonna vote for your project. It says I'm gonna decline a meeting. So I'm not sure where that's going, but that was the one I believe she entered into evidence or whatever. So that's nonsense. Um, as far as Amazon and the new facility coming, there's no place for people to live. If you've ever looked at the dynamics of Deltona, there's about 45,000 working people in Deltona and 40,000 of them leave the city. So with Amazon coming, you're actually gonna employ people that already live here. They don't need a place to live. Um, one, one of the things I did have a concern with that has never been brought up, I tried to look for it in staff reports, maybe I missed it on my computer. Nobody ever talks about our consumptive use permit. I want to know what is our current consumptive use permit and what percentage of that consumptive use permit is utilized. Because I know Jim over here talking about the straw project was actually to increase our consumptive use permit. He made it sound like Maritza and Dana and Anita were idiots for taking water off the river and putting it in a sand pit. I think he's how he described it. I'm surprised you guys didn't question him on that. But there was a much more involved process to that. And it was actually to increase your consumptive use permit to allow for more housing, more development. My question is, when that project failed, what did that do to our consumptive use permit? If anybody could answer that, I would really like to know where we are right now, what is our consumptive use permit, and at what percentage threshold are we on that? I'll leave it at that, thanks. Thank you, Albert Bryant, please. Actually, I can answer his question because our consumptive use uh, was at 125,000. If the straw project would have gone through, it wouldn't have gone down. That's what the straw project was all about. So, that being said, it would have might have actually increased if we could have showed that we weren't using as much fresh water as we were because we were actually going to pull some of that out and stick it into what? Oh, that's right, reclaimed water. So that's being said. Two things that we need to remember here. This is a large project. Everybody knows we need commercial. I hate to tell you this, at the end of the day, this is taxes commercial. What's the last number I heard? Oh, 
it runs between uh, 1.25 to 2.1 million dollars, depending on how you tax it, who's taxing it, so forth, so on, or how you're looking at how it's being taxed, how many units they have, so forth and so on. So let me think about this for a minute. Are we willing to give up close to probably three quarter of a million dollars for 200 apartments? Really? That's interesting. We have one of the shallowest commercial tax braces in Central Florida. And y'all are arguing over 220 units. Really? Wow. That's amazing. So in other words, what y'all are saying is that you don't want these people to develop more apartments that would actually reduce or have a chance to reduce the taxes on homesteaded properties inside the city. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. We have a little over 37,000 homes now in Deltona. Out of those 37,000, how many actually pay full homestead? Do any of y'all know? Yes. Do any of y'all know at all? Okay. Actually, how many yes. actually pay? Yes, sir. It's a little under 10 grand or 10 grand houses that actually pay full, full taxes. You know why? Oh, because they're rentals. And that act number is actually probably low. So then you ask, how many actual elderly do we have here that are on fixed incomes? That number is actually low, to believe it or not. It's not near as many as everybody thinks it is. Back in the day, it was thought to be 100,000 people that were all over 65 here. It ain't never been that high, never will be that high. Matter of fact, y'all are on the decline here in Deltona. So why would you take a tax base that will actually bring our tax base up and give it the middle finger. I'm amazed at all the arguing that has gone on tonight that makes me wonder, you talk about your constituents, that you want to make sure that they're getting their fair share. Well, if they have to pay more taxes because this guy here can't develop 200 more houses to bring in more tax monies? How's that helping them? Hmm, I'm not too sure I can see how that helps. You know, I've stood here for eight years. One of my biggest goals is to bring more commercial tax base into my city. This doesn't. Thank you, Adam Vasquez, please. Good evening, I didn't uh, cover it all last time, so I'll make this quick. Um, so before you guys go and vote on this, I do want you all to remember that you all here are Deltona residents just like I am. Um, with the circus that I just watched, I think you know four of you guys just attempted to make a motion, so it's kind of obvious how this vote's gonna go, uh, because when you finally got it off, it's like we went one, two, three, four. So you guys tried to all pass the same motion, and um, I guess what my biggest issue is, is you know after you guys take this vote and approve this, these folks behind me here, they're gonna leave the meeting. They're not gonna stay for the whole thing. Um, like the rest of you guys are and like we are, right? So, so just remember like the folks who live in this city, right, or who you were elected to represent, right? And so when you make comments like, am I supposed to include that in the motion? Am I doing the right thing? And you're talking to the person, the rude person at that, who's here asking us to approve something or asking to put something in our community, in a pretty aggressive way, I would say. I've been called aggressive, so I'm okay to call it out. Very aggressive. I'm not really enjoying the back and forth here between the commission and the applicant's attorney, but you know, just get it over with already. Let him go home. You guys work for us, though. So people are watching, um, and it doesn't seem like we made any progress in solving the traffic problem or the school can, or the school issue with the teacher shortage. Thank you. Mayor, this ends public comment. All right, can we please go for a vote? I'm sorry, one second. 
Or should you have to call each vote individually because it's a quasi-judicial? Yes. If each of you, Liz, we need to do a voice vote. Okay. Got it. And if each of you would explain why you're voting the way you're voting, for the record. Commissioner V. Lavasquez. Yes, it meets all the qualifications. Commissioner, Commissioner Burbank. Yes, it's what Deltona needs. Commissioner Colwell. Yes, it meets all the qualifications. Commissioner Colwell. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Doty Lee. Yes, for the tax base. Commissioner McCool? No, it's a bad project and the taxpayers getting screwed and I just want you to remember that. Go taxpayers. Mayor Avila? No. What's your reason? I don't believe that there is an actual vested interest in this. I, I, I just don't, because if there was a vested, then they wouldn't be here asking us for permission to build something if they originally had the right to do. So. Motion passes four to two. All right. At this time, before we proceed, I would like, because we're get, approaching the 10 o'clock mark, can I get a motion to extend the meeting, please? No. I move to extend the me a meeting, Mr. Mayor. For Go. how long, Commissioner Burbank? Give me a time, like an hour, um, two hours. So we're finished, sir. Let's take a five minute break and then we'll come back and then we'll go with the motion. Commissioner Burbank, please. <laughs> commission meetings back in session. If the commissioners can please come to the dais. All right, before everybody took a break, we had a motion on the table by Commissioner Burbank to extend the meeting until we are finished. Can I get a second? So Commissioner Burbank, uh, they want specifically a time frame. I can't do that. I cannot predict the future, Mr. Mayor. I will withdraw the motion. All right, can somebody make a motion to extend the meeting, no. at least for an hour, no. and then if we need to extend it again, we can. I make a motion to continue it tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Commissioner Jody? I said I make a motion to continue it tomorrow night. <laughs> Anybody second? <laughs> second. So there's a motion on the table to continue this commission meeting tomorrow, and then there's a second by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Can we please go for a vote? Commissioner Burbank, we're waiting for a vote.
All right, guys, we need to get something done right away. This, this commission right now looks extremely ridiculous. We do not look professional. We are not children. We are adults. We need to start acting like adults. I don't find anything funny about what we're doing here. The, these things here impact a resident's life. So while some of you think it's a little joke to sit here and say tomorrow, do we, Madam Attorney, do we have, do, how much notice do we have to give the public? It's incredible that a bunch of adults up here can act like adults and get a commission meeting done because they're too busy playing games. Madam Attorney? I'm looking in the charter right now. Then we wonder why our residents think that we're a bunch of clowns and this is a circus. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Point of order, I'm waiting for the city attorney to please give us an answer. I believe it's 48 hours. 48, 48 hours. Commissioner Jody Lee, do you mind amending your motion to include 48 hours and not till tomorrow? Yes. Okay, could you please oh, read your motion? my motion. No, go ahead. Who want, who, can I hear a motion please? Make a motion to extend a meeting 48 hours from now. Okay, is there a second? Third, two days, whatever. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jody Lee to extend the meeting till third. to come back on the f within 48 hours. Is there a second on the table? To come back Wednesday at seven o'clock. It's 40, what, right? I will offer an alternative. You do have an agenda that I think is, isn't is totally final for the third. And um, we could move whatever you want to continue to Respectfully, the third. Respectfully, city attorney, we have a motion on the floor. And I would like to know if we have a second. If we're gonna play these games and we're gonna come back in 48 hours, then let's come back in 48 hours. I'm not playing with the residents. I these second. people work. I have, a li I have a wife and child at home. I don't have time to play these shenanigans. It's time that we start acting like a commission that is serious about their residents. Is there a second on the floor? I second. There's a second by Commissioner Codwell. Could we please go for a vote? City Attorney, the motion fails, what does that mean? That means it fails, you have to get another motion. Okay, so um, I am entertaining another motion. I make a motion to continue the meeting today um, for another hour. For one hour, yeah. There's a motion on the floor to continue the meeting for another hour. Second. There's a second by Commissioner Codwell. Can we please vote? City Clerk, and please vote. Thank you. The motion passes six to zero. At this time, we're going into a public hearing ordinance number 05-2023, amendment to the official zoning map to rezone approximately 1.76 acres of land from the business plan unit development, BPUF, to retail commercial C1 at second and final hearing. Mr. Joseph Reese. City Commission uh, Ordinance Number 05-2023, as uh, mentioned by, uh, read into the record for, by the mayor. Um, this is also quasi-judicial, so I will ask if, uh, Marsha, if you can do swearing in. Sure. Um, and then we will ask for our ex parte. Anyone who is here that wishes to speak in this matter, if you would stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Joe, I was for you, Joe. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, fine. Anyone else who wishes to speak on it may. You just don't have standing. And if you want, if you do want to speak, then fill out a slip, please. Mayor, if you can just pull the commission quickly for the uh, for any ex parte. Sure. Commissioner Stephen Caldwell. Commissioner Jody Lee. No. Commissioner Dana McCool. Why bother? 
Yes or no? No. Commissioner Avila Vasquez? No. Commissioner Tom Burbank? No. Myself, no. All right. Commissioner, uh, this is uh, ordinance number 05 2023 for the Catalina Point commercial rezoning application. Um, you all um, did approve this um, in May, on uh, May 22nd, on uh, first hearing. Uh, the request is for uh, to amend the official zoning map from business plan development BPUD to retail commercial uh, C1 for approximately 1.76 acres of land located at 2965 Holland Boulevard. Um, at this time, um, this is before you for consideration at adoption hearing. Okay, is there any Commissioner Avila Vasquez? Thank you, Mayor. I hereby move to adopt ordinance number 05-2023, amending the official zoning map to rezone question mark 1.76 acres of land from business plan unit development BPUD to retail commercial district C-1 at second and final hearing. The city manager has the authority to make the corrections to scrivener errors and the like. There's a second by Commissioner Stephen Caldwell and the motion originally from Commissioner Avila Vasquez. At this time, is the applicant here? Okay. Applicant, if you can please come with your Okay, is there any questions for the applicant? No questions. Is there any public comment in the matter? No, Mayor. Okay, can we please go for a vote? Motion passes six to zero. And actually, uh, city attorney, were you supposed to take that vote? Because is isn't this I'm a sorry. quasi judicial? Yes. Okay. But Can so everyone who's voting time? needs to it needs to be a vote voice vote list. Yeah. So everyone needs to vote and um, give your reason. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Yes, to meet the requirements. Commissioner Burbank. Yes, Commissioner Colwell. Yes, it meets the requirements. Commissioner Jody Lee. Yes, it meets whatever. Commissioner McCool. <laughs> yes, because it meets the requirements by the city. Mayor Vila. Yes, because uh, it meets the requirements <laughs> and uh, we, need, we need more commercial. The motion passes six to zero. Okay. okay. Next, we're moving to incision H, public hearing ordinance number 06 2023, amending the comprehensive plan of the city of Deltona, amending the capital improvements element by providing for the replacement of the capital improvement project sheets at second hand and final hearing, Mr. Joseph Ruiz. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so this is an ordinance uh, 06 as was read into the record, uh, amending the capital improvements elements, uh, capital improvements plan, five year plan. Uh, so yearly uh, to uh, be consistent with state statutes, um, as well as um, recording with the state, our capital improvements plan uh, staff has done an update with you all approved um, on uh, May 22nd, uh, 2023 of this year. And so it is here before you all for adoption. Okay. Is there any questions? We have Commissioner oh, yeah. Jody Lee. No questions. Um, I want to make a motion here by a move to adopt ordinance number 06-2023, approving the 2022-23 capital improvements element updated by provider for replacement of the capital improvement project sheets at the second and final reading. The city manager has the authority to make corrections and scrivener's errors of the like. We have a, a motion by Commissioner Jody Lee. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Before we go to a vote, we do have Commissioner Dana McCool, and then I'd like to see if we have public comment. Thank you very much. I would like to speak to our, ask you and talk um, regarding our LOS. LOS on schools here pursuant to the county charter city of Deltona is a party to an interlocal agreement with the Volusia County School District and maintains a public school PSFE 
The city of Deltona is currently served by 10 elementary, three middle, and three high schools. Most of these school facilities are located within the municipality of Deltona. All public schools serving the city currently have adequate workstation capacity. School district information indicates there is adequate school workspace project, baloney. And I want us to talk about this moving forward as far as our LOS. We have blindly accepted these without question as residents and taxpayers of Volusia County. And I've been talking about school concurrency. And the only way to get this changed, because the county says it's not their job to do it, is to go to the school district and tell them that you do not agree with this. So LOS is baloney, and I just need to make that. Transportation, yeah, okay. We can talk about that stormwater, wastewater. We talk about that in the report. I don't see anything on here regarding public safety. Is there a public safety component here? LOS, I mean, it is, right? Part of what we get checked off in the boxes when we do development, right, is public safety, fire, law enforcement. Where is the matrix? Yeah, so essentially as far as the public safety for law enforcement, um, that, no, there is no level of service for, for law enforcement. There's That's, what? There's no level of service that we have established for law enforcement. Yes. Yeah. based on the contract. So how come we keep giving it to developers and saying and letting them check the box to say that there's adequate when there's not? If we don't even have a matrix that describes it, it's not even in our level of service report. How are we doing this? We're telling our people that they're protected equally by fire, and I'm venting at this moment, but it's a very real thing. Every year we check this off, box after box, to say that people are paying their fair and proportionate share of everything, infrastructure, you know, tax base of law enforcement. So the, we are capital improvement schedule here, level of service report. We don't have that. We don't have that. Where's the matrix? I'm, that's what I'm asking. So I just want us to be cognizant of this when we approve this, saying that we have have level of service when we don't even know what the level of service is. So you're asking me to vote to say that there's level of service when there's none established. So everybody hear me, people awake, anybody asleep, hear that? I just want us to know that moving forward. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you. Um, going back to uh, Commissioner McCool, isn't that in the contract? We do have a contract with the so sheriff's we, department and yeah, we with do have the fire department. We do have a contract with the with the sheriff's uh, department, and so based on that contract, uh, determines the number of deputies and law enforcement officers that are servicing our city. And all that it's part of what's required to keep the city safe and so forth. That's in the contract, right? That's yeah, based on the determination right of the sheriff and the city. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Reese. Before I get to Commissioner uh, McCool. That's in the contract. Right now, does the contract say that we have adequate enough, uh, adequate amounts of police officers? I, I don't recall, Mayor. I was not involved with the um, contract in itself as far as what it says. I don't know if maybe, if Marsha, you recall any of that language in there. I do believe when we were working on impact fees, we have been a, at a disadvantage because we don't have a police department in the old, and the old methodology for impact fees really is based on that. And so we try to use as much of our contract as specifics, but I had spoken with Ron before he left. It's an area that we need to deal with for the future so that we have adequate impact fees based on adequate needs. And I would say right now we don't. It's something we need to work on. Commissioner McCool, thank you. Which is my point exactly. Moving forward with development, moving forward with safety. We sign a contract every year with our sheriff and he depends on us to tell him what we need. We just had an operation in our city. I don't know if any, how, how many knows it, 20 extra deputies we had for traffic enforcement. On any given day, I can drive every major road. I've done it several times over the last six weeks, Dri driven every major road from top to bottom without seeing a deputy sheriff. Now that doesn't say what their service is. Their service is exceptional. It's exceptional. But when we come to noise abatement in the middle of the night, when we come to traffic, we have major, we've had, uh, hum this week, we didn't have a homicide. Having major accidents on our road because we're putting more traffic on our road, we have a lack of enforcement. It's not due to the, the sheriff's department level of service. It's due to us not having established a matrix and what we want with them. We just kind of, you know, I don't know, we, we just kind of wing it. 
And so how we can say that we can keep adding more people, we've just approved something at first reading. I'm gonna remind you that was just first reading. We've approved something at first reading that is going to put a potential 3,000 more, well, 1,000, if you say three people live in every apartment, which they do, and sometimes 10. But we're gonna have an extra thousand people just there and then the other and two thousand people right there at that end of it. so are we going to say that we don't need any extra law enforcement for that many people and i understand that the matrix deals with calls for service also but the point is it's a glaring defect that needs to be addressed and it needs to be fixed right away because we don't have one. That's why it's not included here. When we don't have a level of service. Our fire department does a fantastic job, but does our fire department have all the staffing that they need? Do they have the equipment they need? We're having to farm out some of that service because we're adding more people. And we just gave them, oh boy, one ambulance. Congratulations. They need more support. And we've not dug in. We've not done a deep dive on that. And we need to do that. If we're gonna keep allowing development, then we need to make sure that we're addressing every single need that the public has. Has. Without question, we need to dig into this. That's my reason for bringing that up. With that being said, Mr. Mayor, I'm done. So next time this comes up, next year, the CIP, the update. Um, no, it actually will come up again later in the year. Due okay. to the hurricanes and everything, it was delayed as far as when it came before you. But you will see for the next fiscal year, um, it'll come again this year. Well, before Mr. Chisholm, could we make sure that this gets rectified? All right, can we please go for a vote? There was, there was a motion. Motion passes five to one. This time we're gonna move over to new business because there is no old business. Consideration of appointment or reappointment of city representatives to the Volusia Growth Management Commission. City Clerk. It is in session A. Mr. Mayor. You have two uh, two applicants. Let me find the right page here. It's on page twelve. Yeah. If I can help out, you have application from Sandy Lou Gallagher and an application from Elizabeth Chavez. Right. Uh, yeah, got it. Elizabeth Chavez and mm -hmm. Sandy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is this voted by all the whole commission, correct? Yes. Okay, and we're only voting for one of the two ladies? It's BGMC one appointments, appointment. yeah. what you're voting we, for? I would like only to make one. the, uh, I would like to move to make confirmation, and then it could be voted on by the, all the commissioners. So, if I may, I move to confirm the following commission appointment of citizen member Sandy Lou Gallagher, or reappoint. Second. Second. Well, there's a motion by Commissioner Avila Vasquez and a second by Commissioner McCool. All right, Commissioner Avila Vasquez, you're still on the. Oh. Commissioner Jody Lee, you're still on the board. Oh, sorry. Okay, can we please vote? Or. Motion to appoint Sandy Lou Gallagher passes six to zero. Okay, at this time we move over to incision B of new business. Discussion regarding the request for the presentation of the key to the city, Mr. Chisholm. Thank you, I've had uh, numerous inquiries about commission members about the key to the city. Um, you know, historically the mayor is the one that makes that presentation for the city, uh, but um, I don't really have anything that gives uh, direction as to how that should happen. So I would ask that you give me your, your ideas and how we should proceed. You're asking me? Yes. 
Okay, so let me ask you this instead. Who asked for this item to be, we have so many more important things to do. Who asked for that to be put on the agenda? No, I had numerous members of the commission ask for it. Okay, so here's my idea. I have several emails here, historically, that the mayor of the city of Deltona has been the only one, at times from what I'm reading, given the key to the city and hasn't even given some notice to the commissioners. I have one here with Mayor Masarsik. I guess there were some baseball players in town. And after he gave the key to the city and some coins, he told the commission that what he did. Um, Mayor Mulder, same thing. Um, as a matter of fact, I reached out to the U.S. Conference of Mayors, who is a very big nonpartisan organization, and they have the accounts of only one city in the state of Florida that actually has some type of policy, and in that policy, it still dictates that the mayor of the city gives the key to the city. Also, since we have the charter here and we have policies and procedures, if we all go to page 10, because this is such an important matter, all recognitions of an individual or group to be submitted to the commission as part of the agenda packet must be delivered to the city clerk to allow sufficient time for copy and distribution to the city commission. This is, again, only recognition. This is not a key to the city, but for those that want to give a recognition out, here's a, my idea of how they can proceed. All recognitions must be tied to an accomplishment which is representative of the city. Submissions are limited to a maximum of 10 minutes, a written summary with appropriate background information, but must be included and are subject, and here's a part that's in our policies and procedures, so if we want to add this to the keys, it still works the same way, uh, subject to approval of the city manager and or the mayor, who may make additions and or deletions at his or her discretion. And that was based off of resolution number 2015-49. So unless you guys want me to continue going down more and more stuff, I suggest that we kind of move past this nonsense. Because Marshall, how much time have you wasted on the key to the city? Because we don't have more important things to talk about. Mr. Mayor, I have wasted 2.15 hours, which results in $322.50. Can we please move forward? Commissioner Jody Lee. Hey, Mayor, give out the key to the city. <laughs> I can take it. No, I, I would just add, I, don't, I didn't bring this up, so don't. I don't care if you give out the key to the city, you want to get the key to the city, I don't, I don't care. I just, anytime there's a key to the city getting out, I would appreciate sometimes if we had a notice, so if we want to participate, because there are deserving people, and I agree with that. I didn't know nothing about the key to the city going to Joe Hearn. I wouldn't argue with it. I would have said yes. I would have probably attended myself. So I, do you want to get the key to the city? I just, in the future, I just, I and I'm not saying that I'm, if, I was, if you're going to give it out, I just want to know so maybe some of us can participate. I, I will only say this to, uh, to your point. I believe I gave our city, uh, our assistant, about a week, maybe a week and a half notice on the key to the city. So I did do that and she was supposed to send that out. Now I'm not gonna blame it on her. She didn't, you know, it, it, she has more important things to be doing, but I did give that information out. Vice Mayor was there and present at the presentation as well. So, Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. I think that the confusion and the question is, um, I know I personally made a request to give a key to the city for a well-deserved person. Um, and it was put on hold because it needed the mayor's permission, which I don't understand why it needs the mayor's permission when us commission, well, I work with this person the longest on this dais. And as you can see, the key wasn't given to, and it was, I can tell the name, Jerry Mays. And I thought he would be here, because I honestly thought that we would be giving him the key today, and it's obviously, it must have been turned down because it was not. But I just feel that if a commissioner, um, you know, recommends somebody um, for the key, I don't, I don't see why it should be turned down. Uh, Commissioner Vila Vasquez, I have no issue. As a matter of fact, I believe Commissioner Burbank sent me a recommendation asking me if I would recognize somebody. Um, I have no issue taking recommendations. 
but respectfully, and I don't mean this in any nefarious way at all, but if anybody up here would like to themselves give to the key of the city, we have an election in three and a half years. The only thing that aggravates me about this coming up in this agenda is we have 18 pages of so much more important stuff. This, this could have honestly waited for a different meeting. You know, and I would have been more than happy to, you know, play this game of give and take. But right now, we have less than 30, 30 some odd minutes left till we have to close the meeting. You know, I don't know what the direction is that everybody wants, but Commissioner Burbank, you're on the, you're on the floor. I was aware that you had uh, notified staff in advance, and I did have some nasty things to say, but thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, but to take Mr. Jody Lee's point, it would have been courteous. Thank you. Next time. You're welcome. No problem. Again, I did give out the notice, so I mean, I don't know what else I can do. Is there anything else, Mr. Uh, Chisholm, that you need us to go? I mean, what direction is it that you're Not looking for? Not on that. I'm, I'm through with that one. Okay, can we move forward? Move okay. forward. So at this time, we're gonna go ahead and take comments on the consent agendas, uh, consent agenda items. Is there any public comment? No, Mayor. Okay, so we're moving to consent agenda, and I'm looking for a motion. You have one. Okay, your motion, Commissioner Burbank? To approve the consent agenda in total. No, I think you need to be individual. Can I get a second? No, you can do it in total. You can pull things out if you want to. Is anybody pulling anything out of the consent agenda? No? Okay, so we, Commissioner Burbank's original motion stands. He wants to make a motion to approve the consent agenda item in its entirety, which is from section A all the way to section K. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Dana McCool. Can we please vote? The motion passes six to zero. All right, at this moment, we're gonna go through Commissioner Special Reports and Requests. And uh, this is not common to special requests. We'll start with Commissioner Burbank. Thank you, sir. The only request I have, and this is the third time, and maybe I haven't explained it accurately, I would like to have a workshop on the comprehensive plan, not necessarily the specifics of what we're going to do with the plan. I would like some explanation from staff as to the process and what we can expect that we're going to have to do, and maybe even roll some, um, some information on the evaluation and appraisal report that's in progress, because there may be some things in there that are already being taken taken care of, and I would like to have that workshop. Thank you, Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner uh, Stephen Caldwell. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Jody Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Dana McCool. Yes, two requests here, special request. I would like for the agreement for the city attorney to be Posted, mailed, posted on the back, whatever, because there is agreement in place, and I think that the, the problem keeps coming back to uh, contract. There is an agreement, and I need for that to be shared this week, before the end of the week, because it's, we have Mr. Souza that has continually asked for that. I know that there is an agreement in place, so please do that, share that. Also, as far as the pass-through goes, I would like to make sure, Mr. Chisholm, that that is stated, that the pass-through has been done, the legal pass-through has been done, uh, and the last request, um, if you could please, Mr. City Manager, get with Mr. Souza on that. I know that I have stated that these things have been done and I don't want to be made a liar because I know that I talked with you. I've answered questions on social media regarding this and so I want that to be posted um, whatever way possible by the end of the week. So I need them to have their answers, please. Another thing, a special request is that I do, I want this noted that um, next year in June, which will be Pride, I would 
I would like to um, see moving forward a pride proclamation issued because our city is a city of great diversity and we need to embrace that. And not only that, we need to recognize those brave enough to stand up um, as we do other uh, marginalized parts of society. We need to also do that. But I never want somebody to come before this commission thinking that we don't care, given a sense that we don't care. I'm an advocate and I think that everybody up here is. So next year, if you know, we need to do that also. It's the respectful thing to do. It's inclusive and we are an inclusive city. So I make that as a special request also that another year go by that where we don't acknowledge all of our residents. So thank you. The only special request I have is when we release uh, city attorney manager's agreement, can we please make sure we set parameters? That way we know how much our normal billing is gonna be consistently now. To be fair, I know a lot of us kind of swamp over her and try to get all these additional questions asked. Maybe it's time for you to start telling us no, I'm over my parameters, but we need to set parameters because if we're not going to have a contract, we need to have, we need to make sure we have parameters. M Mr. Mayor, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As far as a special request goes and to clarify this also that for my, just, just so it's known, as for myself and I think other commissioners, this came up in my budget discussions when my ask regarding caps and that will come out during budget time. So I, it, if it's being asked about, I want that as a whole right to be in the public. So that's my special request is just the agreement is given out to the public. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna move forward to city attorney comments. I have none. None. City manager, comments? Mr. Mayor, on the diocese, I think you have a letter that looks like this that um, <clears throat> we prepared for uh, our delegation and it uh, identifies the amount of funds that <clears throat> we've been able to bring back to the city. Uh, and just without going specifically to everything, we had uh, funds in the legislat legislature that was appropriated um, and funds that were available to the city through various FEMA and other federal projects, total of which is about $15 million combined, 10 million from outside sources, 10 million, 87,500 to be specific and then city funding to match it would be required is 6,962,500. And all of these are related to um, primarily storm damage that occurred within the city and also uh, mitigation as it relates to solving some of those storm uh, problems. But um, the specifics of that uh, document is uh, contained here and we have it in our office for available for anybody. And I think that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chisholm. We're gonna go to city commission comments and we'll start with Commissioner Burbank. Thank you, sir. A few. Uh, comment number one, uh, comprehensive plan uh, policy CON2-WR2.2 says permitted periodic removal or control of nuisance, submerged, emergent, or floating vegetation shall be limited to that necessary to provide reasonable aquatic reed control as defined by the appropriate agencies. Any use of chemical herbicides for such purposes shall ensure that the water quality and ecological integrity are not degraded. We are killing Lake McGarity. I've had it reported by a number of anglers. We are killing Lake McGarity. Uh, another thing, well, that's, we, we get into that at some point in the future. We're also not <coughs> assessing people equitably. Uh, another comment is, uh, uh, apparently at one time we had a contract with the car wash to keep our vehicles clean. I saw one of our IT people on the road today and the roof of their car was absolutely black does not bode well for the second largest city in Volusia County or in Central Florida to be riding around in cars that look like that. It's just an appearance thing. Uh, and then I've got, uh, we have children out there, high school kids that need community service hours. If you have a 501c3, you are eligible. Uh, well, just let us, let the school board know, let the kids know. I found a young kid, a place on a goat farm, let's be creative. He doesn't know yet that they're not pets, that he's a vegan. When he finds out, I'd love to be in the room. And finally, um, 
You all mind the heat? It's getting hot outside. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Review of Asquez. Thank you, Mayor. So first I want to apologize to the audience for my outburst at the beginning of the meeting. But some people like to bring out in the open personal matters of homes without knowing what they were talking about. Some of our men left to go fight for this country and didn't come back the same. And I'm not looking for sympathy from anybody. I'm just trying to clarify why this person decided to bring my personal business out in the open. My husband is a Vietnam disabled veteran, 100% disabled. That's why you never see him here. That's why you never see him with me in any event. So yes, if you go to the tax office and you look for my taxes, it's under his name. We do not pay real estate taxes because he earned that, just like every other veteran who went to fight for this country and came back the way he came back. This person has the habit of standing on that podium and not discussing anything that has to do with this city or anything that's on the agenda, and he's allowed to continue. So I just wanted to apologize for anybody if I came hard, but I had to. Because I don't have to apologize for anybody for not paying taxes in this city or any other city or any other state that we have lived in. My husband paid for it. 100% veteran disabled. <coughs> That's all I have to say, ma'am. Commissioner Stephen Caldwell. No. Commissioner Joe Lee. My comments should be easy. Thanks for staff, for everybody being here. Uh, there's a point I wanted to make up. I heard that there was some, con some developers that had a meeting with somebody, that an elected official in the city. And I believe the city manager was involved in this meeting. And they were discussing getting like-minded people elected to this bench so they can get development projects done. From what I understand, the city manager didn't like the conversation and left it. The good old boy system should not belong here. And if people are trying to get in bed with developers to make this kind of deal, that's wrong. And I just want, this is what I heard. And it, if there's some truth to it, I hope people rethink some of the things they do. That's all I got. Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Vasquez, I 100% agree with you. 100%. It is easy to stand in judgment of other people when you don't understand. We have a lot of veterans in the city. We have a lot of elderly people that have are they deserve the tax breaks that they get, homestead and the exemptions that they get, because they left what they had somewhere else and they didn't come home with it. They deserve that. And for that to be brought up in that manner, attacking somebody regarding that, it's classless, it's buffoonery, and it's uncalled for. I, I disagree with a lot of stuff, but I disagree with that strongly. That's attacking somebody that served our country honorably. So know your business before you bring your business in here. I would like to um, also second Mr. Chisholm's letter that was sent to our dear Senator Tom Wright, who always fights for the city of Deltona. He's been a good friend to the city of Deltona. and. Um, Thank you for getting us what you got us. I understand there is a project that we didn't get, and uh, I don't know, a lot of cities didn't get what they want. We didn't get the $600,000.
and uh, I'm just not gonna buy into that one there, but um, city manager's report has a lot of great information in it. If you haven't gotten it, please do. We have Latin night coming up here um, at the center July 28th. There is a, um, be, be prepared. There is a summer food program coming up at uh, Hack, Harris Saxon. Um, there's a lot of great information in here. There's a disaster supply checklist, City of Deltona, the 4th of July. There's a lot of good information. And Mr. Chisholm, I meant to ask you this earlier. Have we? Do, how did the residents get this? The, the residents, do they get this? I think it's online. Uh, we were working on getting it mailed out, but I don't know if that happened yet. Okay, because that's my point exactly. If we can flat rail, mail this in with the water bill, maybe, right? It's great information, and it's great for people to have that aren't uh, online, and I think that we should... Um, I think that we should get that to them. So if we can just really follow up on that by the next, I'm being time specific, by the next meeting, that would be fantastic because we need to get this information to people. And um, listen, staff, thank you so much for all the hard work that you do. You're very unsung. I appreciate everybody being here this evening and what you're doing and contributing to the growth of our city. I'd like to especially thank everybody that has worked on putting our budget together so far. Um, and and, um, and, it's, and I do this often, but a special shout out. Joe, you've been invaluable. You've it has schooled me this last couple of weeks. Um, I've called you unannounced and you have been very forthcoming with information. You've helped educate me and so I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your bright mind in our city as you plan for a better Deltona. Um, so thank you for that. And um, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I only got a couple of things. Uh, we have a meeting greet tomorrow at 9 a.m. at the center, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we have, I have a, I have my second quarterly town hall at 7 p.m. Friday at the center as well. And then, the commissioner, oh, he's coming. Then I wanted to bring something up that's extremely important, right? Because we wanna, to Jody's point, we wanna make sure that we're not doing things we're not supposed to. So, Marsha, can you please give me a short, very short definition of what the sunshine means? The sunshine law specifically. Florida has a very strict sunshine law, and when it comes to elected officials, it basically, sorry, it basically means that two elected officials cannot meet and discuss anything that could reasonably be foreseeable in coming in front of the commission. That's basically what Sunshine is. Now there's all sorts of different opinions and all of that. I've even looked into, as an example, if, if you go on a social media site and then the mayor's on it, then one of the commission comes on, as long as the two of you are not talking about anything that you could reasonably foresee in the future that you may vote on, that is not a sunshine violation. By the same token, if you both are talking on social media and you are talking about something that would be reasonable to think you're gonna, like the budget or the comp plan or those kinds of issues that would be reasonable to assume they may <coughs> come in front of the board for a vote, then it is a sunshine violation. It applies to social media. It applies to texts, it applies to every form of communication. I don't know about AI yet, if we have fake people running around trying to talk to any of you, but that's really what sunshine is in Florida. What about, and I don't okay. mean to interrupt you, sure. what about <clears throat> emailing the whole commission on how you're gonna vote if you, you attempt, you think you're gonna be absent from a, video, from a meeting? If you're, if you're communicating with another commissioner or with the mayor about how you're going to vote, that is a sunshine violation. However, if you send email, emails out to, one of you sends to all the rest of you about something that- Has nothing to do, I guess. Has nothing to so, do with, So yeah. he, here's why I'm bringing this up. And I mean this at the utmost respect and I just want this to stop. 
Commissioner Burbank, you've been asked multiple times by the city attorney, the city manager, heck, staff has asked you to stop emailing us. I have, I, I, I got an email from you the other day, forwarded, and so did the whole commission, making fun of, hey, Joyce, when was the last time the commission got in trouble for sunshine violations? Never. I don't know if you wanna be the first one on there. If I get another email from you, I will personally walk myself to the state attorney's office and give them every single email. I am sick and tired of the shenanigans, all right? Don't email me, right, unless we're in a public forum. I don't care how you're gonna vote, I really don't. On top of that, this political prosecution that you have going on, that somehow is having an effect on people. I mean, for goodness sake, we have Deltona Strong contract coming up. Mr. Chisholm, respectfully, if we're gonna change Deltona Strong's contract, we have to change every other contract in the city of Deltona that's doing business with us. I am sick and tired of the prosecution. I have a list of people, a list, Brandy, He's trying to find out what her business, if she has a business tax receipt or not, okay? I'm not gonna get into Nick's situation. The American Legion, we talk about our veterans, why, why continuously harass these people, all right? Deltona Strong, I mean, when is this gonna stop? I'm asking you publicly, whatever email chain you have, stop emailing me. I can care less about anything that you want to make fun of because their state attorney is not doing anything. And if RJ or Larissa is listening, maybe he should look into it. So, meetings adjourned.